And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the final pit stop in the NASCAR 99 Tour. I'm Barry Johnson, along with Al Robinson. Al, the points race right now is very, very tight. It's, it's. I think obviously Wayne Smith's. Uh, to win or lose. To win or lose right yeah. now, it's going to be Wayne Smith, I think, right yeah. now as things look. Yeah, I think fate has a lot to do with it. Uh, Wayne Smith, uh, you know, they call him the Oval Outlaw. He's been known since day one as a guy that gets in the car and goes wide open as hard as the car will go uh, from the first lap to the last lap. At the same time, he's not lo known for having a whole lot of patience. Uh, whether he can sit back today and kind of stroke that car along and, and preserve the lead is uh, something we'll have to wait and see. But, uh, you know, Wayne's a, he's a charger, so... Uh, that's going to be a, a major factor in uh, the outcome of, the, of his championship or his quest for a championship. Two weeks ago in Fredericton, Wayne finally got his first race of the season. Uh, believe it or not, folks, he was the points leader all season, never won a race, but he was there every week, finished in the top five or very close to it, and it was a rather emotional win for him up in Fredericton. Well, there's two things there. Uh, Wayne uh, has two families, okay? Uh, I, people probably don't know, but uh, Wayne's uh, first wife and his kids live uh, in Upper Canada, and, and uh, that was the last uh, race. Uh, before his kids go back with their mother, they come with Wayne for the summer, and they go back with uh, with their mother for the for the winter time. So uh, it meant a whole lot for Wayne to win the race with his kids still there, and and uh, um, he'd been carrying that gremlin on his back all summer long, and and uh, finally he went out and proved something that we all knew anyway. Is you know that he's more than capable of winning a race and and uh, doing a great job. We had a chance to talk to some of the drivers today about the heat, Al. The heat's obviously going to play a factor. Shediac has been known to be hot here. It's it's always been hot here every time we come here. It's the third race this year we've been in Shediac. It's going to be hot, and do you think it's going to play that much of a factor in the race today? I, I would say the heat's probably uh, going to be a real, real, real contributing factor. Uh, it makes the racetrack greasy, okay? Uh, we've got street stock and sportsman cars out there today uh, going to run with us. Um, they're not traditionally known for being the uh, tightest cars in the in the uh, country. What I mean by that is that the, they tend to have a, uh, a few more oil leaks and a few more drips here and there, and that all contributes to making the racetrack in, a, in even, even worse shape. So, uh, you know, uh, sun shining down, a lot of heat, you get driver fatigue, you get oil on the racetrack, uh, makes it all interesting. So we'll, we had a chance to talk to some of the drivers, and we'll take, that, take you to that interview now and just hear what they had to say about the track, the heat, and uh, what they think overall. Feeling good going into today's race? Yeah, I'm feeling real good, really. Had a week off, didn't do much, changed engines and put our little engine back in. Broke a valve spring last time Frederick didn't, but uh, instead of putting springs, we just put the little motor in, and it works good here, so we're kind of waiting to 2 o'clock, see what happens. All right now, uh, what do you think of the season overall, George? This is the last points race of the season here, so uh, overall, how would you rate this season? For me, we started out to run three to five races just on a, our own budget plan. We never even looked for a sponsor, but uh, started off, we were running seconds and thirds and won one, and we're still here. We only missed one race at the end of it, which I guess now I'm sorry I missed it, but we've had a good year for the, the money that we've spent in the car. We didn't spend a whole lot of money. We ran a lot of seconds and thirds, and we did have a win, and, and uh, no, we didn't rack it bad or anything. That's original body. If you look at it, it's beat up bad, but we didn't replace anything, so... In general, I think we had a great year, and the team worked harder this year than they ever did, and uh, I think that's one of the reasons we're here. They worked harder than they ever did when we had sponsors, so uh, I guess things keep up. We'll be back again next year. What's your special strategy going in for today's race? Hammer down. <laughs> back in Shediac, last points race of the season, and it's a uh, pretty close spread here. 156, I think you're off the mark to take the championship. Special strategy for today. Uh, actually, today I'm just going to go out and try to win the race. That's what I do every race. So uh, if we can just stay out of trouble today and, not, and bring the car home in one piece again, it'll be a good day and a good season. Yeah. Speaking of the season, how would you rank this season, NASCAR wise? Was it good overall? Give me your impressions on it. Yeah, for me it was because all we were looking for is a top 10 finishing points to win the rookie, and so far we're uh, fulfilling our, what we wanted, I guess. And uh, the crew, I couldn't say anything with like without them, they I couldn't have done this, and my sponsors. Oh, well, we're just going to go out and race today. There's no way of getting to the front, but uh, I'd like to stay there in the top five. We've been there all season, and and uh, just get a good clean race today and get out of here with a good season. Uh, speaking of the season, your impressions for the season overall? A successful NASCAR year? Yeah, we had a good season. We had a couple of engine problems there, just small details. But, I mean, uh, it was just enough to knock us out of the points hunt. But uh, we're satisfied with the overall season. Right, and, and today, anything special you uh, you do to your car when you're at Can-Am here? Is it dialed in just right for you right now? Well, the car feels pretty good there now. But, I mean, it depends on what the sun does and whatever here and whether the track tightens up or not. But I think we're all right. We'll be in the top there tonight. Uh, heat going to play a factor today? Uh, not for us, but no doubt it'll it'll do it. Like I mean, I don't seem to mind the heat too much. 
Well, we're not going to use no real strategy. We're just going to go out and race the car and try to stay out of the wrecks, and hopefully at the end of the day we'll be the points winner. There you go. Well, you, you're uh, the closest person to you is Greg Stewart, number 99. He's 47 points down on you. You're going to be uh, looking in your mirrors for him? Well, we won't worry, worry about him a whole lot. Uh, we can finish back a fair bit in the field if we have to, but we'll be watching for him. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have 26 cars in the field today, 11 of them New Brunswickers. Al, uh, we could have had more cars uh, here today with us. Well, uh, I expected uh, Doug Stokes to be here for sure. Doug won his first NASCAR feature here at this track, always runs good here, and, and uh, had been here for the previous two races this season. Uh, Marty Prevo from Halifax had, had indicated uh, that he was going to attend. Um, no, I'm quite surprised. Uh, Brad Tozer, uh, the guys tell me that he went to Fredericton last night. Uh, uh, the, they wanted to put 50 pounds in his car because he runs a Burt transmission, which is a special transmission they don't allow at that track. He wouldn't put a, the 50-pound weight penalty in, so he turned around and went home. But he didn't turn up here today. So there are three cars. So I mean, very easily could have had, had the 29. Uh, other couple of people, maybe I won't mention their names uh, for fear of offending somebody. But, uh, you know, 30, 31 cars is certainly attainable on a regular basis. And that's what we're looking forward to next year is, is having the guys coming back and, and uh, racing with us on a weekly basis. Well, on that note, on that note Al, we, uh, you and I had a chance to sit down and talk earlier this week about the NASCAR Tour season, where it's come from, where it's going, and, and what was done this year. And uh, it was kind of a, a good sit-down conversation. And uh, just briefly, right now, your opinions on the NASCAR season so far? Well, I think we've had a fantastic season. Uh, there were a lot of doubters around. Uh, you know, we skipped along week to week. Car count went from, you know, lows of... Uh, 13-14 uh, at the non-points race of the, the first of the year. Things picked up. 15-16, uh, 20, 22, 26 today. It, it got better all along. The fans stayed with us. That's fantastic. The fans appreciated the racing and the product that they were getting and, and stuck with us all season. And we take our hats off to them. Um, I did announce at the driver's meeting today we hope to have a tentative schedule out uh, for the year 2000 by the Friday the 27th, I believe it is, of September, should be on our webpage that night. That's, that's, our, that's our target right now, and we're going to do our darndest to make sure that we do make that target. So uh, we look for bigger and better things, bigger field of cars, and more races in 2000. Well, folks, hopefully it's a little cooler in your living room where you're watching this race because it is one hot day here in Chediac, as usual, and that's fire for the course here in Chediac. I think you can almost smell the sunscreen here, Al, but uh, the beach, Parley Beach, is not too far away from us here, so you want to sit back and relax and enjoy the racing here today on Mass Car Tour 1999 on TVNB. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and take a look at that view there. What a that boat doesn't quite move as fast as some of these mass cars do, but uh, or I shouldn't say some of these mass cars, but any of these mass cars. But uh, what a beautiful day it here it is here in Barishwa, New Brunswick. Not a cloud as far almost as far as the eye can see, but uh, it's not as hot as our last trip here by no stretch of the imagination. But now we're going to bring you the first qualifier of four, and I'll soon be joined by Al here in a momentarily. Nope. No, oh, Al says he's not. Okay. Anyway, we look after things here. First qualifier starting on the polls, the number 79 car of Chris Duncan, by the way, is getting married on September 11th. Congratulations to Chris and Mary Ann Bond, I believe the name is. So congratulations to you people. And on the outside of him is the number 17 car of Dave Potter. Next is the 52 car of Sean Tucker and the 44 car of Wayne Smith. Then the 88 car of Kevin Moore. Then the 19 car of Tim Rogers, and then the 28 car of Alan Vincent. So we have seven cars for the first qualifier. As Steve Pettifaw has got the rolled up green up, and they're going to get ready going for racing here in the first qualifier. Going into turn number one, it's Chris Duncan in the 79 car, followed closely by the 17 of Dave Potter. Sean Tucker sitting right in behind Chris Duncan, kind of looking down to the inside of Chris. We see the Oval Outlaw in the 44 car showing a little bit more here than what he did in the dash for cash. He didn't really have to do a whole lot for the dash for cash. Just show up and run a few laps and go into the pit. He wants to save that car and finish some 
first in the points for the 1999 season. So oh, Al's back here to join us here momentarily. Yeah, so back again, Barry. <laughs> two, two, two jobs today for sure. Uh, good man to handle them both, I think. Well, I just got a little talk to the guys myself before this heat, ra heat race started and re reminded them that the out outer groove is slippery and that uh, we're all in the show, so let's not tear any cars up. Let's be smart and let's be a little bit courteous and let's be there in the in the tail end. That's Chris Duncan putting on a real good show there. Sean Tucker working him over in the inside. So Chris, Chris, is, Chris is dependent on horsepower to kind of, uh, he's drag racing him out. Chris's uh, driving is getting better and better each race and it's unfortunate that... <laughs> This is the last race because he's really coming on strong yeah. these last couple of races. And as we all know, in Gary, he had a real misfortune by smashing into his brother and uh, never really did get the lowdown on what actually did happen where there was communication problem with Dana and his spotters or what the problem was. But uh, Chris Duncan had a real good showing, led for about 23, 24 laps. And it was actually in the lead when the, when the mishap, mishap happened. That's we right. We watched Chris Duncan going there now. We see he's got pretty good line coming through 1-2. Uh, the car is following close in the inside, but when he goes to make the turn and in, in, uh, coming into four, the car is going up high. He's got a push there, and he's leaving the, the low side of the track wide open. So uh, Wayne Smith has kind of moved up uh, ever so slightly, and, and or cautiously, I guess is a better word, and uh, he's looking underneath. So if Chris gives him a, a hope, an opening here coming through four, I mean, he's going to... He's, he's going to take gonna, it. You don't want to give... You, he's oh, here it is, there. right? Yeah. He gave him the opening there, but... Uh, Wayne didn't Wayne's quite not, take it. Wayne's not going to waste that, waste the car. Not not for one point this, in this part. He's got to get in the big one and be. Oh, gave a little bump into Chris. Oh, loosened Sean. up Chris a little bit. They yeah. opened up the door for Sean Tucker. But Chris hangs onto it and still somewhat maintains the lead as they come across the start. Right flag. Flag. Last lap. Whoa. Last. Oh, good driving. Oh, oh, the 88 of Kevin Moore spins out in the top of turn number one. Steve Petipod does not haul out the yellow. Nobody in any immediate Check, danger. Checkered flag flies. Checkered so. flag comes out to Sean Tucker. Second place was 44 of Wayne Smith and 19 Tim, Tim Rogers. Rogers. So I don't think uh, Chris was too happy with that little bit of bumping and pushing there. But unfortunate for him, he was running a real good race. We have a replay of that coming up. As they come around the start finish line. Chris gets a little bit into uh, Sean Tucker there. Chris was trying to c cover two lanes at the same time, and, and uh, you can't drive in the mirror and drive ahead of you at the same time. I think maybe he just was, uh, you know, trying to give Tucker that little nudge to, to make sure he didn't get in underneath him. And we see it again here. Just a little bump there, and Chris couldn't keep hang on to it. Yeah. Yeah, at the same time, I suppose we'd call it half and half because Sean Tucker did put the squeeze on. But, uh, you know, the current uh, rookie points leader, uh, this is win. Another, another heat win for him this year and uh, picks him up uh, some valuable points to maintain his position in the Skull Link Fast Five. So coming up very shortly as we see Sean Tucker making his uh, victory lap on the first qualifying heat, the second qualifier will be coming up and it'll be another seven cars. Like I said earlier, we have 26 cars here, 11 of them are New Brunswickers. So a real good showing here for the last race of the season in the Mass Car Tour 1999. Well, a quick rundown of the field here as Richard MacArthur leads him more, uh, around in the uh, Atlantic uh, Chrysler Dealers Dodge Dakota. Um, on the point, the number 21, the Blockhouse Bomber from uh, Nova Scotia, the 21 of Dave Pierce. Following him in the North River Sand and Gravel, Monte Carlo, the 71, Rick McCracken out of New Brunswick. And the Ideal Muffler Sunrise Meets uh, car out of Sherwood PEI, the 77 of Dave Gorvet. The Pioneer Coal, Nova Construction, number 89, Donald Chisholm out of Picto, Nova Scotia. The number 80 of Kevin Moore. Uh, not quite sure of Kevin's sponsors, but Kevin is out of the uh, Fredericton area, and this is his uh, third time out with us this season, so it's glad, glad to see Kevin on board. Uh, actually, Kevin, the last time he was with us was in the, the 250 in Annie Ganesh, and he had some power steering pump problems, which eventually, uh, with a pump unhooked from the end, severed the drive shaft, and uh, about 10 laps from the end, uh, his, his night came to a, to a sharp and abrupt end. But uh, more than a respectable showing, and uh, was running in the top ten a good part of the day. So great to have Kevin back on board. You can expect Kevin Moore to be a contender for Rookie of the Year in NASCAR in the year 2000. My apologies. In the earlier race, the 88 car was not Kevin Moore. It was Chris Hughes who ran in that first uh, qualifying heat. So wow. my apologies on that. We only have That's six cars out there. We're supposed to have seven. Uh, the 22. 22 of Fred Driscoll had a, 
uh, rear end uh, uh, bracket brake okay. and took a shock and a drive shaft out, so they're still fixing that car. The last car, uh, not to slight anybody, is the number eight of uh, Leo Cochran out of uh, Harriet's Field, Nova Scotia. And this is Leo's, I believe, his third trip with us this, uh, this season. Hope to have Leo on board uh, next year. Uh, Leo has been running Chryslers for years and years, and this is his first year uh, on board a Chevy. So, 71, Rick McCracken. Uh, taking the high side Taking there. the high side and, Whoa, and just driving on by. So I don't know how he yeah. did that. None of the other cars were able to do that. Yeah. Now, Rick's just a little bit tight in the middle of the corner, too. You see him uh, uh, when he goes to make the turn in the apex. The car goes a little bit to the top in 1, 2, 3, 4. He looks great. Dave Gorvette working the outside on the 21 of Dave Pierce. And Donald Chisholm. Boy, has he improved. He's improved a lot He's from improved his first a ton, race. yeah. He's following really, really smooth. He's running a good line. He's come a long way. Boy, he's going to be another contender for the NASCAR Rookie of the Year in uh, in the new millennium. And we do talk about the new millennium, what's going to happen, what races we should look for, and how many races are going to be next year, and uh, well, we, a few uh, other things we talked about uh, earlier this week, Al and I did, and uh, you'll be able to see that at the end of the show. NASCAR's intent right now is to have a schedule for the year 2000 published. should be on our web page. Uh, it's supper time on the 17th of September. That's what we're hoping for, or shortly after supper. So uh, fans can, can certainly go to www.mascar.net, and they'll uh, know everything that's happening over the next couple of months. So Rick McCracken is now taking the lead in the second qualifying heat. Boys, Rick McCracken gets a good starting spot. The top four cars out of each of these, these heats qualify for the main. The remainder of the cars go to a B feature, which will be a 10-lap race later on in the day. Uh, but Dave Pierce, uh, Rick McCracken must have had real good power because Dave Pierce is, is holding the 77 of Dave Gorvette off not a, without a whole lot of difficulty. Dave running a real good line. The car is going around the corner smooth. A um, little contact at the back of the pack between the 80 of Kevin Moore and the 8 of Leo Cochran. Kevin's got... Uh, well, Dave Gorvette took the high side there yeah. too and came out, yeah. of it, came out of it good. And he goes by Dave Pierce in the 21 car. Yeah, finally got line. Dave Found a place in the track where he could get some grip. Dave Pierce, one of those drivers who could really use some sponsorship. So he's got a big blank spot on the top of the hood of that car, and anybody who's interested, I know he would just love to have you on board. It's a great way to advertise your, your product. White flag out, next time by flagman Steve Pettipa, showing it for the number 71 of McCracken. Almost a, a, a thir at least a good third of a lap lead, so he certainly got in line today, and, and the car's running great. And what, and what a hot, sunny Sunday afternoon here at Shediac Can-Am Speedway. But not as hot as we've had it here as a checker flag comes out from Steve Pettipod, and he's pointing at Rick McCracken. And there's your qualifying heat number two winner, Rick McCracken in the 71 car. 21 Dave Pierce third and 89 of, of Donald Chisholm picking up the first four qualifying positions. So the 8 of Leo Cochran and the 80 of Kevin Moore will move on to the uh, B feature later in the day. So we'll see them in a 10-lap dash for qualifying positions uh, after the next two qualifying races. So, as we see Rick McCracken taking the checkered flag for his victory lap around, and he's going to get his picture taken here eventually. We're going to go to a quick break, and when we come back, qualifying heat number three on the NASCAR Tour 1999 from Can-Am Speedway in Bearswad, New Brunswick. Good shot of the fans here at Can-Am Speedway in Bearishwa, New Brunswick. Welcome back to NASCAR Tour 1999 on TVNB Sports. I'm Barry Johnston along with Al Robinson. Al's doing a double duty here for us today. He's doing his regular duties with NASCAR and doing some duties with us here in TVNB. As usual, he's a busy man here at race time. So oh. Qualifying heat number three coming up and maybe just quickly run down the field for us, Al. Okay, uh, on the pole today, 97, John Fleming. Uh, Four-time winner this year. Um, I look for him to run away with this one. The uh, 15, Scott Alexander, had a great last three or four weeks. Real good, strong finishes. Uh, top five in the 250 up front last weekend in, or two weekends ago in Fredericton. Uh, in third place, we have the number 24, uh, Scott Livingston, out of uh, Charlottetown PEI. Scott's run three or four races with us and look for him to be there all day. Uh, seven of Dana Duncan, had a pretty good run in the dash. 
until he got a little, got bumped a little bit. And at the tail end of this heat, we have the number 10 of Tim McKay out of Halifax, Nova Scotia. And Tim's also ran three or four races with us uh, this year. And I must say, too, that the intent of, of those guys that are on the track is, uh, and most of the people that are here today, they're talking, hey, NASCAR, year 2000, we're going to be there for the season. Uh, McCarthy. Absent from that heat, Barry, we it's should have had six cars in that heat. 81 of Bobby White. Uh, no, 22 of, uh, of uh, Freddie Driscoll. As actually, Fred is, has worked for NASCAR as a tech man all year. Was a racer back uh, uh, three or four years ago. Uh, run a bunch of seasons, and Freddie's uh, had, a, had a breakdown. Oh, he should have been in the second qualifier. Oh, okay. We're missing We're missing the 81 car okay. of Bobby White in this well, heat. I'll have to speak to my staff, because that's where I got the message. <laughs> it's all right. We Boys, all you, got the, you got a minute now. Anyway, top four, four to five. So that last spot, that Tim, Tim McKay and, and uh, Dana Duncan, I mean, they're working so they don't have to run that next 10-lap race. And Tim McKay just powers by Dana Duncan on the low side. So by no surprise, the 97 car of John Fleming is in the lead here in the third qualifying heat. And the 24 car of Scott Livingston is in second. And Scott Alexander, get all these Scott straight here, is in third. Not like the Dave's last time around, though, eh? No. <laughs> And then, oh, we got uh, Scott Alexander. He's running. His cars are on rails. He's ridden down along the uh, the uh, bumps there on the, on the low inside. He's following the groove. And Scott Livingston's protecting that low side, so he can't get that, that Ford nose in underneath him. Oh, Dana Duncan now back underneath the 10 of Tim McKay. So we got uh, two good races going on at two different places on the track, and John Fleming's out for a Sunday drive. Basically, that's the only way to sum it up, Al. Yeah. We got two real yeah. good races here for second and third and fourth and fifth. Yeah, Dana, Dana Duncan got his got the position, the fourth qualifying position back from the 10 of Tim McKay. So. And we just reached, I believe, the halfway point there. So the good race to watch right now, well, it was, was the seven car of Dana Duncan and number 10 of Tim McKay. But Dana Duncan now seems to be running away with it. He's got a, a good line there. Well, 15, oh, into oh. the back of the 24, eight. If we can't go by him, we'll go through him. Let's, Let's see if, it, if the favor gets returned. I think it just might. Uh, we got to catch him to tap him. That's the thing. Yeah. And I don't think he's going to catch him. And the popsicle sticks are up. Two laps, Two laps to, go. to go. John Fleming's just having a Sunday afternoon drive literally here this afternoon. But he'll not have such an easy time of it coming up in the main feature. 100 laps coming after yeah. one more feature, and we have a... A B qualifier. B qualifier, which will take there'll be ten cars in it. Now we'll explain how that starts just before it goes on the on the track. One lap left to go. John Fleming has almost a, a half half a lap. A half lead. a lap, yeah. And he's got the checkered flag. He's no stranger to the checkered flag here this year, folks. Uh, like Al said, four wins. Second place is Scott Alexander. He goes straight to the pit. Dana Must Duncan straight to the pits and tim tire temperatures. Tire temperature for sure. Yep. Yeah. See, what we've got here this afternoon, Barry, is something that we don't usually see in mass cars. Uh, with the sun being out, and the sun's going to be out when this feature goes on the track, we've got track conditions equivalent to what we're going to have when we race our feature. So That's instead of having to have a setup for, for uh, practice and then make then change the car over for the, the main race, not going to happen today. So no. little less, a little less work for the crew. Yeah. but uh, Well, might see some quicker times, too, later on. So coming up very shortly, as you see, John Fleming taking his victory lap around the... Can-Am Speedway here in Barishwa, New Brunswick. The fourth qualifier will be coming up. And there's six cars in that one, I believe. Yeah, yep. there's six cars. <laughs> Count them down there in the back straightaway. As we see, Bobby White's going to join them. Okay, He's so there was a change then. That's what happened. They put the 22 in one heat and Bobby White in the other. So there was a, there must have been a mix-up in the original lineup. But nonetheless, he's going to get his qualifier yep. anyway. Yep. So, Al, I'll let you run down the field here again. Okay. Well, we got the Flying Fisherman right here at the front, George Koskulix. Not a more colorful, colorful man on the tour, and George tells it like it is, and George <laughs> is here having a good time. As, as we've heard that's, in the past. That's what it's all about. George is there having a great time. And I uh, must say that uh, over the years that, that uh, I've dealt with George and with Liz and the rest of them, that uh, very professional crew, uh, great people to socialize with, and uh, they're, here for, they're here for a good time and, uh, and to do, some, do the thing they love to do on the weekends and as a family, and that's race. Uh, second to uh, George, the 48 Dave Oblinas, the Salisbury boy. Uh, quick car, Hemke, built by Dean Clattenburg in, in Concord, North Carolina. Uh, Dean was up, ran that car a couple of weeks ago at a pro stock race in, in Halifax. Uh, managed to get caught up in some uh, in a chain reaction uh, accident in, in, a, uh, in the feature. They jumped the brakes, and after, like the 401 the other day sort of thing. 
and uh, took the radiator in the front end off it, so they've got it fixed. But, uh, you know, Dave won the, uh, won the dash here today, and we'll see just how quick he is coming out of the hole. Third, 99, Greg Seward, currently second in points. 35 of Brad Mann, who led some laps in that dash till he managed to get a little bit high. Um, lost my thought there for a second. Number one, Glenn Rasmussen. Regular pro stock car in Fredericton, making his very first trip to uh, Shediac can -Am Speedway. Great to have him aboard. Uh, beside him, the uh, 77 of, uh, sorry, 770 he is today, Jerry Curtis. And the 81 of Bobby White at the tail end. And Greg Seward decides to go through the infield, well, take a shortcut. I think he got bumpered into the... Yeah, he's getting started very, very slow. No, I think I think the yellow's going to have to come out here. He's in... No. Trying to get it into the infield area. The yellow's going to come out. Steve Petipas got the yellow. Something happened there. I don't know if he broke something. Or Racer Chaser from, from Shediac Can-Am. Wasting no time before the cars are back around. He's got the, the back bumper ready to go against uh, the 99 of Greg Stewart. Very slick operation here at this racetrack. It almost puts you to mind to uh, uh, the racetrack in Gary. How everything just runs bang, 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 bang. And, you know, there's no waiting around. Everything is just, everybody's lined up and ready to go. Well, there's a whole lot of case of, a chance of having sunstroke here sitting sitting today because <laughs> <laughs> it's some hot down there. But uh, no, they're still pushing the 99 of Greg, so he's broken something on the uh, going for the uh, going for the green. So we'll see if uh, his crew, his brother Jimmy and and uh, Fred, can get the get the car back together and get it out. As you see him now getting pushed down to pit row. So George Goskulix is still sitting on the basically the pole position. I think we only had one or maybe two laps oh. complete. No, I think uh, we're probably back to the original start. One lap down, maybe, Barry. One lap, maybe. Because I believe they, just, they had just crossed the start-finish line, and then yeah. uh, Steve threw the checkered flag, or the, uh, it's the yellow flag. It's funny as you see them pull up. Jerry Curtis, a little tentative to pull to the outside. I mean, when the inside's the fast way around, why would you want to go to the outside, right? That's right. But uh, anyway, they all fall in line, and uh, see the lights off in the uh, Chrysler dealer's pace truck, and uh, Steve Petipa giving them the rolled-up green. That means they're going next time around. Uh, number one of uh, Glenn Rasmussen give uh, give Greg Seward quite a poke in the rear end. Whatever whatever broke in Greg's car, and I, I'm presuming myself maybe that uh, he may have transmission problems because uh, they run him in third gear and shift into high coming to the flag. And if he missed a shift or uh, and that's uh, there's a pretty good chance of that. That could be uh, could have been the problem. But I'll uh, check in the have check in the pits and we'll have uh, word back before the B feature starts. So the roll up green is up and we're going to get ready for racing here again on the fourth qualifier. Now we are down to six cars. George pulls right away, and Brad Mann fills the hole, so the 48 of Dave Oblinas, so still going to squeeze in. Oh, Rasmussen showing some power there, sliding right in under. So we could have a real good 100-lap uh, oh. feature here this afternoon. Well, it's great to see. It's great, great to see Glenn here, and, I mean, he's, he, it's a long old haul for him going home tonight, way up over, new, way up past New, De new Denmark. But uh, first time out, and a Chrysler product. And, you know, we really like to see the, the all three brands represented. Uh, Good to have him on board in the Avenger. He did win the feature last night in Fredericton, and uh, he's won, a, I think, more features by far than everybody else up there this year. So we'll, well see how he, how he stacks up against the Mascar guys in the long run, but uh, it, is, it is a pleasure to have Glenn on board. Brad Mann is another one who raced last night in Fredericton. Yeah. And Brad, Brad got to the outside, and from the outside he went to the backside. So uh, I would believe or surmise by that that the outside of this racetrack is still slippery that the outside groove just isn't there so not only did some of these drivers have a long night last night steve pedipa was is the flag went up in gary and he's down here today helping out mascar with the resignation of art steves so these guys got a lot of time steve's been on that stand since uh 11 o'clock this morning was our first practice and he probably didn't get off until 11 or midnight or so last night so he's he's been, he's, yep. been, he's been in a stand all night yep. all day now he's the, the number one of Rasmussen's moved up, and he's starting to put a move on the 48 of Dave Oblanus. Dave doesn't watch that low side. He's going by, and Bobby White's coming hard right behind him. Well, Rasmussen got on the brakes and got... Well, he's got uh, he's got some line there now. He may get by. He does going. He is going to get by Oblanus yep. down the back straightaway. We got a good race there for second and third. And if somebody makes a falter, Bobby White is really going to jump on it. Bobby, Bobby I'll, I'll White looking to the high side. I don't know if that's such a good idea. Well, he, he figures he's got to get around them somehow, and he's really taking a look at the both of them. He gets way high. White flag out. Last lap this next time by, or this time by. So they got Bobby White's got three corners to figure this all out. He's down to two corners. 
As they go down the back straightaway, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a race there. White driving in hard. I don't think Glenn Rasmussen is going to let either one of them go by. No. Real good no, race. Whoa, yeah. Bobby White made a real good charge at the end. Yeah, short by about a fender, but uh, no, a real good race. Fans must be, have to be pleased about that. Number one of Glenn Rasmussen, too, should mention that uh, if he can pick up enough sponsorship to help him cover some of the travel expenses, uh, he'd be another candidate for the Rookie of the Year in NASCAR next year. He has, uh, uh, has, has conveyed to a few people that he's definitely interested in making the move, and if the sponsorship money was available, that uh, he'd be with us. So uh, I just hope that uh, over the winter that uh, he can work things out. I talked to Brad Mann uh, up in Fredericton after the race, and he said he was looking looking strong at NASCAR too, but uh, he doesn't know if the sponsorship is there for it, and that's that's the name of the game, folks. In this in this uh, sport, is sponsorship. It's it's the only way to go, really. Oh yeah, it's the only way you can make a go of it. And I don't know how these fellows like Dave Pierce, Dave Potter, or, you know, even George Koskielik's here. They're doing it all on their own, folks. And well, they're, they're not they're not making their grocery money, but as long <laughs> as you don't break any major stuff, we NASCAR does pay enough money to get you to the races and get you home and get you back the next week. So. Uh, None of them are in this to make a living, and, and uh, that's that's the main thing. We try to treat everybody as fair as we can, and, and uh, uh, our our purse distribution is a, an awful lot different than you're going to see probably in, at 90% of the motorsport uh, associations and, and groups and tracks in North America, uh, whereas we, we try to spread it out over the over the big picture. Uh, without the big picture, the little picture wouldn't be there. So, uh, you know, that's the big thing is the support of the, of the tour. So coming up next will be the 100-lap. No, sorry, the B feature. B feature, 10 laps, yeah. Well, the 10-lap B feature, and then after that will be the main event, a 100-lap feature from Can-Am Speedway in Bereshwa, New Brunswick. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to NASCAR Tour 99 from Can-Am Speedway in Barishwa, New Brunswick. I'm Barry Johnson along with Al Robinson. And once again, you see a beautiful view of, I don't know if it's Shediac Bay or what you want to call it out there, but boy, it's, it's one spectacular view. And we don't quite have a full house here like we normally do, but uh, so much going on in and around the Moncton, Shediac area. The, the, uh, the Francophonie Summit is going on this weekend, and there's lots of events and festivities going on there. And... And uh, racing going on in Riverglade today. And, <laughs> and, a, and a super beach day. Yeah, and a great beach day. Yeah. Besides, in September, folks, you don't usually get a good beach day in September. And uh, s school will have already been in, in once this show does go to air. So uh, a lot of people are traveling this weekend, too. It's the last really long weekend of summer. So it's a, it's a busy weekend, but it's nice to see the fans out that we do have here. And coming up now will be the what we call the B qualifier. And I'm going to let Al run down how this works and who's going to be involved. Okay, Barry, uh, in our, in our uh, four qualifying heats today, we take the first four cars out of each of those heats, and they, they automatically move on to the main event. Uh, everybody that finished in fifth and, and further back in the pack moves on to this B feature, and they'll line up, and they'll run 10 laps, and the way they cross the finish line in the 10th lap, the 10th lap is how they'll run from 17th place to 26th. So every car you pass to the, uh, in this heat, or in this, in this uh, B qualifier, uh, counts towards your finishing position. And the big thing to remember is if you pass the guy here, you don't have to pass him when the feature starts. So every, every position gained is an important position in the, in the big picture. There are no points in the B features. So there's no points to, to be made. It's just, it's just starting positions and uh, just a, a case of weeding things out. We see the 35 of Brad Mann getting a friendly little nudge from the racer chaser here to get him going. He must be having starter problems today. Well, it's, it's a good opportunity for some of these cars that didn't finish up high in the qualifying heats to get a little better positioning, better than maybe some maybe starting 24th or 25th. This way here you have a chance of finishing or starting 17th, 18th, 19th or something like that. So yeah. I should mention too that the 81 car, Bobby White, that uh, should have been in the in the uh, third heat and didn't show for that heat and pulled in at the back of the wrong heat. And uh, that part, that point was picked up by the uh, NASCAR scorers and the uh, race director, Dave Dixon. And Bobby White is supposed to be at the tail end of this bunch. And looking down in the pit area, I still see them bent over both sides of the hood in his car, so it doesn't look like he's going to make this event. So when we go racing today, Bobby White's going to be starting in uh, the last position. Which is not too See, good for him, we all considering he's third in points right now, and he's 95 behind the uh, leader, which is Wayne Smith. So uh, he'll be looking to stick, uh, stay in the top five. That's the, that's the big thing. So that's where all the big uh, money is. You know, there they go. They are going to push him out. So 
his car is is backing up off the pad, so uh, I stand corrected. Uh, Bobby White makes his way to the race area. So uh, they're crossing the, him over, and they're going to go racing. So Bobby White's going to have to pick up pick up the pace to get her going. Rolled up green is there. Brad Mann is sitting on the pole. On the outside of him is the 79 car of Chris Duncan. Third is the 99 car of Greg Seward, who in the fourth uh, qualifier, he had a battery yeah. shift on him, and it shorted out. And uh, so he's got a new battery in there, and everything's working. I don't know if he took one out of his truck or what, but uh, he's got a new battery, and we got the green flag, and we're going racing. This is the B qualifier. It's a little extra for some of these other drivers to move up a little higher in the... Oh, the eight car. Leo Cochran. Leo Cochran goes... Got loose and away around. Keeps her running, going to pick up the tail end. So he's got some work to do to get himself back up and get a couple of positions. 99 and Greg Seward looking for that all-important 16th starting spot. Oh, underneath Brad Mann is... Man shuts the door on him for the first time. Oh, that's the 88 of Chris Hughes. Chris Hughes all by himself, sitting Falling there. sideways. This track is almost like a skating rink out there. If you get up a little well, too high, and we got the oh, 22. 22 and the 28 sideways and turn in turn. Uh, Fred Driscoll. Four. That's the first time Fred's been out uh, this year. Actually, his first race lap. Uh, he did bend a, a, a fair amount of equipment in the back end. Had a bracket come loose in the rear end. Took the drive shaft out of it. Ruined a couple of shocks. Uh, ruined a panhard bar. So that uh, Fred pulls back out in front of the 88 of Chris Hughes, the 28 oh, Alan Vincent. He's blowing out some smoke out of the back uh, of his car. I would say he's got tire rub from the uh, his little excursion to the center field. Yeah. Now he's must have a tire dragon. That clears right out, so the tire looks like a right rear rubbing. Yeah. Halfway playing. this time by. So 99 of Greg Stewart. 79, Chris Duncan, 35, Brad Mann, 10, Tim McKay. And Tim McKay making a move on the low side of Brad Mann for the third spot. Boys, folks, keep an eye on the 79 car this afternoon of Chris uh, Duncan. He's been really, really doing some good racing here the last few weeks. So keep an eye on him today. He's going to be somebody that these drivers are going to have to look for in their rearview mirror because he's definitely been a contender here. And like I said earlier, it's unfortunate that uh, the race season's coming to an end because he's having a real good run out there. Also note that uh, Chris Duncan does have his car for sale, and, and uh, I know that uh, what they want to do is they want it, they'd like to buy a new car, but it would be a real good race car for somebody to, uh, to pick up from Chris Duncan. Uh, if they wanted to start out in NASCAR or start out with a pro stocks in Fredericton, uh, Chris just wants to buy a, buy a, new, uh, a new racer. Maybe good Two to laps to go, Barry, this uh, next time by. Good investment for myself, Al? Yeah, you've got to start somewhere, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather go down to the, uh, what we saw here earlier today with the Wildcats. That'd be more my okay. speed. Last lap, and Greg Seward's actually catching up to the uh, 28 and the 22, and they, they did have problems earlier and were in center in center field, and he slowed down. He doesn't want to get... Uh, Fred Driscoll's having some problems there in handling. He's Yeah. Well, the car's got no laps on it off, but it's a good-looking car, he's, but he's got that twitch, so he's got something in the back end that's catching up. 99, Greg Seward first, 79, Chris Duncan, and Bobby White all the way from 10th spot up to 3rd position, so those were seven important spots that he picked up during this during this race. So keep an eye on him during the main feature, which will be coming up very shortly, a 100-lap feature here at Can-Am Speedway in Barishois, New Brunswick. We're just west of Shediac. You can almost smell, I think, the uh, sunscreen here today. <laughs> it's it's uh, pretty wild out there. It's, it's hot. It's uh, the 5th of September, which is really unusual to have this kind of nice weather here. Well, but, it's, uh, but nonetheless, we'll have to take we, it because hey, we'll, we'll, take be it, yeah. we'll be shoveling in a couple of months' time. That's so. for sure. I mean, Santa was here last night. Um, one of the NASCAR officials became Santa Claus. We had a little staff party, and uh, we had a great time. Exchanged exchanged some some gifts and some pleasantries. And uh, over in uh, over in the parking lot last night, uh, most of us with motorhomes and trailers, and and uh, had a social three or four or five hours of it. And, and today's Boxing Day, so I guess we're having turkey again tonight for supper. But uh, <laughs> uh, we have some of the racers are going to be stopping by with us tonight too on the way out. So oh, that's uh, good. The, the NASCAR family kind of, this is the, the breakup day until the next season, and, and uh, we've had a, a fantastic summer together, and uh, can't wait to the, for the banquet, and then can't wait for the snow to be gone so we can do this all again next year. And by the way, folks, the banquet is open to the public. All you have to do is get in touch with NASCAR, and they will get you in the right direction as to who to get a ticket from and when it is, where it is. I will say it's at the Atlantic Winter Fairgrounds. October the 26th. Just right beside the Moosehead Premium Drive Speedway. So just get in touch with NASCAR, and they will... Uh, get you in the right direction to get some tickets. I know some people like to sit and uh, talk with their favorite NASCAR driver and kind of talk shop a little bit. So coming up next, Al, will be the 100-lap feature here at Can-Am Speedway in Barish, New Brunswick. So we'll take a little break, and we'll be coming right back.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 100 lap main event here at uh, Can Am Speedway in Barishwa, New Brunswick. As you see, some beautiful panoramic shots here of the Shediac area. And there you get to see the full field of 25 cars. One car has gone into the pit, and that's the Dave Potter car. I think he had some minor adjustments to make. So we have 25 cars out right now, but I, we suspect Dave Potter will be out very shortly. 26 cars in total here, 11 New Brunswickers. One of the largest contingents of New Brunswickers at a race this year. This is the last race of the CarQuest NASCAR Tour 1999. It's been a, a great season of racing with the NASCAR Tour, and we were hope, glad to bring this to you. As you see, the first one, two, three cars, that's 21 Dave Potter, or uh, Dave... Dave Pierce on the on the pole. Sitting beside him will be the 97 car of John Fleming. Number six, George Koskulix. Number 17 car is in fourth, which would be Dave Potter. 71 of Rick McCracken's in fifth. And I'll just run down the rest of the field. 15, Scott Alexander. 48, Dave Oblinas. 52, Sean Tucker. 77, Dave Gorvette. 44, Wayne Smith. And there's your points leader as you see him on the screen. He's really got his hands full because he is only has a 47-point lead on Greg Seward and a 95-point lead on Bobby White. So each lap is very important here today. Going down the line even far, a little farther is the 89 car of Donald Chisholm, the number 24 car of Scott Livingston. Beside him is the number 7 car of Dana Duncan. Right beside him is the number 70 car of Jerry Curtis. Then it's the 19 car of Tim Rogers. 99 car of Greg Seward. And the number one car of Glenn Rasmussen. Number 79 car of Chris Duncan, as we said earlier, is getting married. One week, well, less than a week on uh, September 11th. And also his car is for sale. If anybody's looking to start out with a, a pretty good car, he's been really driving well lately. So that car is for sale, and if you want to get a hold of Chris Duncan, he does live in the Rossa area. You can look him up in the uh, directory. I don't have a phone number for him right off the top. And beside him is the 81 car of Bobby White. Then number 10, Tim McKay. Then it's the number 35 car of Brad Mann. And then beside him is the number 80 car of Kevin Moore. And the number 88... Number 88 of Chris Hughes, the number 22 car, is Fred Driscoll. And the last two cars is the 28 car of Alan Vincent and the number 8 car of Leo Cochran. So, as you may be able to hear in the background, we've got the call from Al Robinson. The gentlemen, start your engines. And you can hear a little bit of that lighter thunder sound. When these cars keep going around, it's as loud as thunder, folks. As they get a few warm-up laps here to get the tires warmed up, get the feel of the car again. We have a little bit of a change in flagman. It's now Stephen Pettipa, as Art Steves has handed in his resignation after the Fredericton race. I actually did resign before the Fredericton race, but uh, he st stood by and uh, did the flagging for that race. As we are soon to be joined by Al Robinson here very shortly. As he gets a little milk full of water here to wet the whistle and gets the scanner geared up here. And he's our great technical man here for us here on TVMB. This is the last race of the season. As we see the 88 car, Chris Hughes, he's, I guess we don't see him on the monitor here, but he's trying to get his steering wheel straightened out here so he can having some problems with the steering wheel here. He's not getting the steering out of the car that he wants. The wheel's just spinning around on the, on the steering column. Oh. Al, you, Al, you're out of breath. I'm out of breath, Barry, yeah. <laughs> Said too much and ran too far, too old. <laughs> what he's trying to do with the steering wheel is a, is a quick disconnect for safety purposes. And uh, it notches on, and when you pull it back, it slides into a groove and it clips so it can't come off. So every time Chris pulls, it's coming off in his hand, so he's got to get that remedied or hit the pit area. And he doesn't have much time to do it. It 
doesn't quite look like he has that fixed. Yeah, he's saying, saying to his crew, get the other quick coupler for the wheel. We got problems. So uh, that's the best I can tell you because he, the rest he, of it we can't repeat over this. No, he, he can't even steer the car off the track. They can't push him off the track because he can't steer it. So they're going to have to run one out to him, I guess. No, they'll, they won't. Uh, get on that little four-wheeler, I guess, and yeah. run one out to him. Yeah. 17 of Dave Potter uh, was to start fourth or fifth in the lineup, and he's gone to the... Uh, had to go to the pit area because of a tire going down, so he'll pick up the tail end of the pack. Unfortunate break for him. He would have been starting fourth. Well, the big thing is, uh, here, Barry, is that uh, when they get out and they get moving, John Fleming's uh, would be expected to pull away from Dave Pierce at a pretty good pace. When he gets pulling away, I would expect there'll be in the lap traffic within 10 laps or so. One of the larger fields we've had here this summer, 26 cars in all. Well, as I walked down through the uh, through the group, and I wanted to make a special point of, of thanking every each and every one of the guys for putting up with me for the summer and, and uh, extending my thanks on behalf of the rest of the NASCAR staff and telling them that we'd look forward to seeing all of them uh, back again next year. Certainly had uh, some of the guys looking at the four wheeler, some of the rookies saying, "Well, gee, you know, like I could really use that, and I can so I can run for that, I can compete to get to win that." So we're looking at uh, some of them picking up some new cars for next year, and we're looking at trying to cut some more costs rule-wise so we can bring some more cars back into the fold. Well, each rule, when it pertains to cars and mechanics of the car, I guess is a few more dollars out of the driver's pocket or the sponsor's pocket. So. Well, the big, the, big, the big thing is, is uh, engines. and I, you know, We're never going to cut the engines back because the guys with the money are still going to buy whatever they want to buy and pay for the dyno time. But if we can cut the tire costs back some, if we can change some bracketry in the cars and get rid of some spring rods and, and stuff and go back to basic heim joints and get rid of some of the, the, the you know, the, the fancy engineering, I guess, uh, some of the options, maybe we can save some money and get some more cars back in the field. See, now Chris Hughes is going to be towed off the track, and he wants the car lowered down just a bit. He was up a little too high, and he was yeah, waving at the tow truck driver, lower me down some, because yeah. I think he was hitting on the back end a little. Well, he'd be catching on the on the uh, safety rail that prevents the car from driving underneath and hitting the fuel tank. So. so he's going to start at the back of the pack today, if he gets out there in time. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a bad break for Chris Hughes, but it's a good break for Chris Hughes because that's a heck of a lot better than it coming off, going into the first corner and having 10 guys behind you all in India. So Exactly, or him uh, going into a wall and not, yeah. not much he can do other than come on to the break. Yeah. You have no, it, it's a, that's like a deer in the headlights, really. I mean, you, what do you do? Yeah, I'm looking down at his pit area. I mean, he, he could uh, maybe find somebody else if, if he had... Uh, the bolts, actually, is what they're saying. The bolts come out of the steering wheel, so the quick disconnect bolts on. So he may get back out if there's just bolts be before these guys get uh, in motion. That's an unusual thing to happen. Usually that doesn't happen very often. We don't hear I've, tell of it I anyway. I've never heard of it happen before. So it's a rather cool afternoon. Not real cool, but cooler, I guess, than what we've experienced here before, Al. It's, it's a nicer temperature here today. and well, we've, I, I look, we've had I look, a rather long long wait here before we run our 100 lap feature here tonight and I know, I, I know you don't want to get into that too much. I had hoped that we'd be out of here 5 30 20 to 6. I mean that three and a half hour show uh, it's a hot hot day you know people sit in the sun uh, start with it's not good for you you need just you need sunscreen you need protection and they've been here for a long time we had some problems earlier in the day with uh, cars leaking oil and uh, you have to dry the track out there's no way around that it's something that has to be done but I had hoped that a three and a half hour show would have would have sufficed and and uh, We'd be just about ready to throw the checker to the NASCAR event. But anyway, we're, uh, we're ready to go racing now. And if our guys uh, show some common sense and they all know there's been a lot of fluids on the track and it's slippery, then with it, they'll all be there at the tail end. You know, nobody's going to win a race in the first lap. We've said that many so times this year. And the last time I made a comment about somebody's track, I got in a whole lot of trouble. So I'm going to keep my mouth shut this yeah. time. I didn't get in trouble. I just kind of said what I thought. And uh, I guess those, those comments hurt. And uh, Never please the world, Barry. There's the drivers going by Unfortunately, now. They're giving a wave to everybody, yeah, and everybody's the fans giving a wave back. At them, yeah. You remember the, in Fredericton two weeks ago, boys, the grandstands in the tower were shaking when they get up, the yeah. front, when they took the green flag. I mean, 4,500 people on their feet. So uh, We haven't got quite that crowd here today, but still, nonetheless, considering what's going on in the Moncton area and the weather, we've got a, we've got a decent crowd. That's a pretty good crowd, like you said, Al. With the oh, there's George, George Koskuli out there. Him and John Funnick playing a little bit. George just reminding John, hey, I'm the guy that's behind you. Yeah. So, uh, tag your head, yeah, I'm right tag here. Tag your yeah. Next time I tag you, you might be gone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, they all play their little games. 
So we're hoping to actually, we at TVMB are hoping to bring the uh, banquet ceremonies at the end of the year here on to you people on TVMB and show you what what goes on and what the guys do after hours and get a few comments from the drivers what they thought the season was about and hopefully if the funding is there we will be down in the Atlantic Winter Fairgrounds. We'll see how they look in street clothes. Yeah, we'll see what they really look like yeah. out of their pajamas. Yeah, I said that to John Fleming and. Uh, Scott Alexander, when they walked by them, there were some kids talking to them in Fredericton, eh? and I said, geez, and I said, these guys, I looked at the kids, and I said, uh, these guys wear pajamas too, and they just kind of laughed. Eh? And Scott, Scott Alexander, the great guy that he is, he just kind of had a good chuckle, and he said, yeah, he said, I even wear them to bed too, he there, said. There's the 88 of uh, Chris Hughes at the at the uh, track entrance, so they did get the bolts back in the steering wheel, that's all it is, and he'll be picking up the rear end, so hasn't lost any laps, very fortunate that way. I would say that flagman Steve Pettipa is going to definitely be giving the... Uh, oh, look at the fans. Fans are on their feet. The place is on their feet. That's, uh, that's great a great show of appreciation. That's a sign of Ken Packham, the best announcer in motorsports in Eastern Canada and probably all of Canada doing his job. He's I got these fans right into it. This is what they've waited for all day. As you see that on your yep. monitor right now, they're up on their feet, folks. We're not we're not pulling your leg. Yeah. No, they not appreciate this. sitting down. Pace lights have gone out in the pace truck. Next time around, we're going green flag racing here. 100 lap main feature at Can Am Speedway in Barishwa, New Brunswick. I'm Barry Johnson along with Al Robinson, and you're going to have to listen to us for the next hour or so. Here they come. Green the flags roar, flying. The roar of the thunder as they go by. Oh, George Koskillix into the 21 car of Dave Pierce. George oh. Koskillix into the 48 car of Dave Oblinas. They're bumping on going into turn number two. And I think they got to get hooked together a little bit. Glenn Rasmussen got smoke coming out of the back of his car. 48 of Dave Oblinas goes high into the marbles and spins out into turn number four. Steve Pettipaugh is reluctant yet to haul it yep. out. He's going to haul it out right now. He has to haul it out now because he's facing traffic. Yeah, he's trying to get moving. Glenn Rasmussen having a little bit of problems, I think. He seems to have lost power. Right? The 22 car of... Oh, we got some leaking fuel out of the 22 car of, of Fred Driscoll up in turn number two. The racer chaser out there. We got a lot of gas out there. He's got, oh, he just took a wipe of it and smelled it. I don't know if it's gas or coolant. Now we listen to the scanner, see what we can pick up. So we did not get one lap completed, I don't think. And boy, we've had a a lot happen in less than a lap. Glenn Rasmussen is just stopped right in front of us here. And as you see on your monitor, a track official or a mask car official is up there. Looks like it might be gas. Just wait and see if we pick up anything on the scanner. They're sweeping it in. If it was gas, normally dissipates just about as fast as you lay it down. So maybe it's uh, coolant. It's a complete restart. The call has been made. Complete restart sale. 21 will move back up to his uh, original starting spot. So this is going to take a little little while to clean up here. We got uh, George Koskulix and Dave Oblinas bumping on the replay. Here they are, right? Where are we here? There they are, going into turn number two. Yeah. A little bit of a bump there, and. Looks like they, they stuck together a little bit when they're going through. I mean, George is still stuck. See, George still going outside, so. He was pushing Dave yep. Oblinas out with him. Yeah, it caught up. I think the, the cars have a tendency sometimes to hook together a little bit. And Oblinas had stayed high all the way through it and got up into the marbles into turn three and four. You know, the guys that must have their heart rate in their mouth and that happens would be the guys like, like the 44 of Wayne Smith and the 99 of Greg Seward or, who are there to on a mission today, so to speak, and, and the 52 of Sean Tucker, who really, really, really wants to win the rookie championship, and he's, they got to finish the race, and if they get caught up in one of these uh, uh, push-shove deals with some of the other cars, then they're in real trouble. 22, Fred Driscoll, still at the back of the pack, so that uh, that may not be out of his car. That may, could very well have been out of the out of the uh, one of the others that was involved in the in the mishap. No, oh, I'd say that's out of his car, but it looks at the front of his... Uh, the 22 car. 22 car. Yeah. He's got some damage done into the front of there, so I don't know if he leaked a little out there or not. So we've got the number one car of Glenn Rasmussen. And that's quite a tongue twister to say. We'd like to bring the names in for you, Barry. Yeah. Oh boy, I had, it took me all summer to get Cos Kulix yeah. out. <laughs> so we got the track all cleaned up. Now let's get the cars. Cars are all back into position here. It's a, like we said, oh, a complete restart. 
I guess so. I'd very interrupt for a second. I'd like to say uh, thanks very much to my uh, youngest son, Derek. He's working uh, turn two for us today, and that's the first time that he's ever uh, become an official at anything. So uh, if it wasn't a hockey referee yapping at him, he's seen the old man do it a few times. So he's down there with the arms crossed and crossing them over, doing a great job. So to, to Derek, uh, thanks very much for helping us out in a, in a when we needed you. Glad you were here for us. Well, it's a family affair today. Your wife is also uh, helping right. out on the scoring today, yeah. too. So you have any other family members that are here that's been put to work, too? Yeah, my, my oldest son is here, and uh, Fred Driscoll will short some crew members, so uh, he, he's working on a car. So <laughs> Everybody's working some kind of an apprenticeship program today. I know. <laughs> but, I mean, they grew up around race cars, so they, they, well, they know uh, what's going on. They maybe don't know the ins and outs of the chassis, but they know what the terms mean, and, and they know when to get out of the way and when not to. It. Brad Mann coming back out into the track with yeah. a little bit of loose body work there. Yeah, he got his he got his tail clipped, so to speak. Ironic because I believe there's a pheasant farm <laughs> game shooting or something in the back, so his pheasant's been spocked. The lights have gone out in the pace truck. Next time around, we're going to go green flag racing here. He's got the back end tied up with a bungee cord or something there. Yeah, actually, Brad uh, came over and, and gave me a friendly jab about uh, us teasing, or me in particular teasing him about coming out of the woods. So maybe, Brad, you don't live that far in the woods, but they're going green, Brad, and you fall right in, buddy, and I hope you have a good race. <laughs> there we go. We got the green flag. A lot smoother start this time around. A lot what is start. a lot cleaner. Yeah. Oh, we got the 22 of Fred. Or, uh, he's, way, uh, he's way off the track, so he's okay. There, Fred he Driscoll is in the infield. Yeah. He's running, so he's he's all set. Stephen Pettipa, the veteran flagman that he is, will not pull out a yellow for that one, that is for sure. We'll notice that Steve Pettipa with his NASCAR Tour official uniform on, he did work for us in the past, and that's a that's a leftover from days gone by. It's just his pants didn't fit, so. <laughs> he's bulking up, as he told you. Yeah, that's right. We all do that, Barry. Oh, I think so. Uh, John <laughs> Fleming is really enjoying his walk on a Sunday afternoon. As he, <laughs> he, he, he's putting a good distance between himself and the rest of the pack. We see Rick McCracken hot on his heels. Oh, Rick McCracken bumps into Dave Pierce. Yeah, leaves, Goes the, high. leaves the bottom open, and Scott Alexander fills that hole on the ball low side. 22, oh. he's around. Livingston, or er, uh, Driscoll's got some problems. Steve Pettipas yeah. got to haul out the yellow now. Yellow's out. He's got some real problems. He's going to go into the pit area here by the looks of things. As we see the front fender flapping there, the spoiler in the front, and... A little bit of smoke coming out of there too. I don't be. Oh, he's going to the pit area. He's definitely going into the pit area. So as we have our second caution, and I think only maybe two laps completed. First, first caution brought us back to an original restart. So we, of course, Mascar. 100 laps of green flag, you get what you pay for. So, uh, lots of lots of chatter, lots of chatter on the on the uh, on the scanner. So as we get things checked out here, the racer chaser is yeah. George Koskula's just saying he hit his elbow in the roll cage again. He said, "Holy, is it sore?" <laughs> so uh, that could play havoc later on in the race. Too. That's right. The arms get tired as it is from holding it in one position pretty near the whole way around that track. And yeah. Donald Chisholm trying to get in line, and the guy's not leaving an opening for him, so. Yeah, there they go. Slid him right in. So that's a driver that's come a long way from his first race in Andy Ganesh. I, I, I think I said next that, year. I said that to him on the... Uh, down on the track when I shook his hand and, and thanked him for helping uh, coming and taking part with Mascar and, and helping us out and... and uh, you know, he's still a rookie next year. So That's right. He, didn't, he hasn't got enough races in to, to lose his rookie status. And I said, like, you know, that, that four-wheeler could be yours. And I, and I said, I'm, I'm sitting up top and I'm watching you every week. And you've improved every week, Donald. You're doing, it, you're doing a great job. And, and uh, we really look forward to seeing you back. And he said, man, I wish it wasn't over. Yeah. You know, I'll see you in the spring. So, you know. Well, another, uh, another, oh. sorry, Al, another driver that uh, was kind of happy he missed the race in Annie Ganesh, the last one down there, was Dana Duncan. Yep. He said, boy, he said, me missing that race, he said, I don't lose my rookie status for next year. So he's another one eyeing on a four-wheeler, too, or, yeah, that's or right. a reasonable facsimile anyway. Yeah, and, you know, so you've got the 89, the 7, um, the 1 of Rasmussen, if he can get funding, would be with us next year. There's three Timmy Rogers in the 19, there's four. Okay, so, I mean, it's coming along. Plus whoever else has got a car right. in the garage that we don't really know about. And that's right. Never know, maybe I got one somewhere, else. There you go. I hear, you got, I, hear, I hear you got a few spare parts. Maybe I can start building uh, on one. Yeah, yeah, all you need is sugar, Daddy. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got two, that's enough. <laughs> so 
So is I think maybe the next time around they're checking the track out just to make sure there's no debris or any liquids on it. I don't think heating is going to be a problem today with these cars. Now they just um, at the front of the pack they realigned the 97 and the 21. Now that's a break for the 15 because uh, when uh, the 15 car of, of oh they moved the 71 car back up too because you do go back the lap so. That's really good. Yeah. In, that's something good. Now, Scott yeah. Alexander has want yeah. to let him in. Yeah. Now he's going to ease off and let him in. Yeah. Don't want to give up those. Yeah. See Dave Gorvette moving up now too. Yeah. No, the guy, guys wait. The rule book says you wait until uh, they're, you're told to move, and that's what they're doing. So uh, nice no. to see the cooperation there yeah. with the drivers and uh, yeah. the officials. Hot in those cars today. I mean, it would be. Uh, you know, coast, well, it would definitely be around 40 degrees Celsius in those cars. I mean, the dehydration, the weight loss and stuff uh, in those drivers today is just uh, just tremendous. Well, I know the time that we came out here to the track, uh, a few of us from TVMB, the commentators on both French and English, and uh, our producer, Danny Ross, we came out and Donald Brun let us uh, go for a drive in his car, and actually the French commentator, Paul uh, you mean Spinner. Arsenal. You mean Spinner? Yeah, Spinner. Yeah, that's uh, that's right. what they nicknamed him now, is Spinner, but... <laughs> The fan, he, uh, NASCAR fans would remember Paul Arsenal did race with NASCAR uh, about 10 years ago, ran with us three or four years, and at one time was the president of NASCAR, ran the, ran the 20 car. So uh, we have to get our digs in where we can. And uh, Paul was driving the car, and he took us around, and in, uh, in Donald Brun's car is kind of unique because it has a two-seater that you can take a passenger quite comfortably in. So uh, it was hot in that car, I'll tell you that. The, the metal that's up, the divider between the driver and the passenger got pretty warm, and uh, I still had a couple of burns there about three weeks later. <laughs> showing on my arm and legs from that. So it does get very hot in those cars, folks. Hot as hot, as hot can be, I guess, because those engines you know, are up over, what, almost 195, 200 degrees themselves, Al? I'm sorry, Barry, I was listening on the scanner. <laughs> I seen you daydreaming there for a second. I was listening. The temperature of, of the motors, what, how high would that get well, up to? Those, the motors themselves run 200, 205, 210 degrees on a normal day, and they wouldn't be any hotter, I wouldn't think, this afternoon. If, if, if conditions are proper, it means the shrouding's opened up and, and uh, the uh, shrouding's there behind the radiator for the fan and stuff. Um, oil temperatures, ideally in the 250 to 270 range, but in, in these motors, when they're uh, wet, or wet sump motors, uh, even with an oil cooler, you're looking at temperatures in the 280 to 300. I, you know, most guys, if they don't uh, have the dry sump system and stuff, I don't know if an oil temperature gauge is a, is a, is a good idea or not because it just makes you worry about what might be happening in there. So, um, But the cars themselves, you're, you're definitely up around the 40. We just got to get the 90, well, the 99s out, out behind or out of line there a bit to get some air into the radiator because going this slow, they're... Uh, Okay. They're ready to cross them over. Well, that was a, it's been a long caution here, folks. Yeah. But uh, got to get the cars in order yeah. and no, get, he's the, get them, them over there now. Cross them over. Yep. I suspect probably the lights may go out in the pace truck this time around. Uh, yeah. Rolled up green. You got it. Yep. Uh, I've been learning something here this summer, Al. Steve doing a great job, though. You don't want to. You don't want to run along slow under caution any more than you have to. Richard McArthur, he wants to get the pace truck back over, out of the way, be safe, and out of the truck so we can watch a good race. So next time around, we're going to go off racing under a green flag. There's a guy like two of the, uh, when I mentioned my staff, I don't know whether I'd include Richard in my staff or not, but he's been driving the pace truck for us uh, for the last five or six weeks and uh, great supporter of NASCAR, has sponsorship in a car, and, and uh, we're really glad to have him with us and uh, feel uh, privileged to have him working with us. So to Richard from NASCAR, thanks very much. As you hear the roar of the thunder here, they come around the start finish line for a green flag and John Fleming as we suspected and said at the top of the show, was going to pull away to the front. we got Rick McCracken in second, Dave Pierce in the 21 car in, well, it was third. Now it's George Koskielix who's in third. Sean Tucker's right behind him and Scott Alexander, the two rookies fighting with one another to win that four-wheeler and the rookie, rookie points champion. A little bit of bumping there between Scott Alexander and Dave Gorvette. Dave looking on the inside. Scott Alexander shut the door on him. As you see, John Fleming really starting to pull away now. And Wayne Smith's picked up, uh, I believe, six spots so far. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think he started in 12th or 13th, so he's up to 7th. It's a long way to go. Oh, there we have the uh, number 8 of Leo Cochran. Keeps her going. He keeps, keeps it going. going. Yeah. What did he put on the track? That's the consideration. The guys in the scanners are telling them. A lot of sand down there. Yeah. Oh, got 
Scott Livingston's car has got a big chunk of the, the door, I guess you could yeah. call it, hanging off of him. Yeah, they cleaned most of that off in one lap. So yeah, just Le light Leo, dust. Leo stayed on the on the lead lap, and that's down out of the racing group pretty well anyway. So the poor people down there in the uh, cool beverage section are getting a good mouthful of dust right now. The infield here is almost like sand, which slows you down pretty quick John for the Fleming, cars. John Fleming really stretching things out. He's John, almost up John, to the. That's right. He's almost up to the uh, la last cars, which are going to be lap cars, real quick. Scott Livingston maybe has to go to the pit. He may get the meatball. Uh, he and Dave, Dave uh, pa uh, Oblinas may have come together. There's a lot of damage in the front of Oblinas' car. So your race leader right now is the 97 car of John Fleming. In second is the Fisherman, number six, George Koskielix. In third is 52, Sean Tucker. Fourth is 71, Rick McCracken. And in fifth is the 15 car of Sean Tucker. Uh, or Scott, Scott Alexander, Alexander, sorry. Then we have the 77, Dave, 77 of Dave Gorbett, 44 of Wayne Smith, the current points leader, 24 of Scott Livingston, uh, 19 of uh, Timmy Rogers, the 10 of Tim, Tim McKay. McKay, 17 of Dave Potter, 99 of Greg Seward working the outside, 81 of Bobby White on the inside. So Seward's got a march on the outside if he's going to make it to the front, going to contend for the championship, and that's just the mission that he's on right now. I think Steve Pettipot's going to use that uh, blue and yellow flag quite often here this afternoon. Yeah. So we have uh, number 28 of Alan Vincent board in PEI. First time he's been back since the uh, horrendous wreck we had with uh, him and Brad Tozer in PEI on the long weekend in August. So they were a while putting that car back together and Alan himself uh, feeling fit enough to get back in the driver's seat. He just got lapped here just a, about a lap ago. John Fleming went by him, but so did George Koskielis. George staying right on him. John Fleming's lead is not near as big as what it was about two or three laps ago. See, there's your race leader, the 97 of John Fleming. Yeah, George Koskulix is uh, is coming in behind him. George is there, and John, you can be sure John knows it. Ironically, they're catching the eight car of Leo Cochran, and Leo Cochran and John Fleming, for those that uh, aren't from the Halifax area and don't know it, have a company together called Racers Alliance. So they work out of the same shop. So Leo's pulling to the pulling to the low side and letting his partner go by, and he's he's playing the same thing with George. Good courteous racer. Leo got lots and lots of seasons under his belt, and. Uh, it's a shame he doesn't have more sponsorship. We'd love to see him here a whole lot more often. Great guy. And George Koskielix following right in behind John Fleming. He's not letting him get out of his sights. Yeah, George got a, a right front right front fender flapping there, too. So I'd and see the, hood, the yeah. hood's flapping a little bit. Yeah, that's pinned in four spots in the front, so it's not going to come anywhere. But he may have that fender off before uh, they're much too long. As we uh, sweep out of turn four every time by, we see a... A real candid shot of the uh, Shediac Bay, I guess we've named it. Uh, don't see any sailboats there right now, but it's 5.30, so I mean, the sailboat crew probably gone to, gone to supper. But George just following ever so smoothly. Uh, he's, working, he's working a little higher, so these guys have moved the groove from the low side of the track uh, up up further. Earlier in the day, we had no we had no upper groove, and the, the guys were saying that the track was slippery, and you need to go out there and run a little high, and get some rubber down, and, and as, you, as you put that rubber down, uh, the cars that here better and better and better as the day goes on. Well, they are running. They were running just on mainly on the. I guess you call it the inside lane. Yep. Now they're running the on the couple. second lane yep. now. Yeah, they're moved up a full lane, and, and they'll move up further before it, uh, Ooh, Dana, race goes on. Dana Duncan gets high out of turn number yep. four. Three wide. Now John Fleming's coming up on lap traffic now, so he's got a group of cars he's gonna he's got to follow and get by. So Dave Oblinas is the next car he's looking at trying to put a lap on as he slides in on the outside. George is gonna see if he can't work traffic to his advantage. John Fleming's going to have a pile of traffic coming up here. There's 24, 79, 35, 28, 10, 17, 21, and 70 all bunched up together there. So he's going to have some time to get through those once he gets up near there. He's going to go by Dave Oblinas right now. Well, you want to remember the Sean, 52 of Sean Tucker's following tight, too. The three of them are following. The three of them are right there. So one guy makes a mistake, you can be sure the next guy's going by. The three Musketeers following one right behind. Do a bit of a rundown here in the field right now. We've got 97 of John Fleming in the lead, the six of George Koskulix running second. 52 of Sean Tucker, the uh, leading rookie, running third. 71 of Rick McCracken running fourth. 77 of Dave Gorbett is fifth. The 44 of Wayne Smith, looking low, is sixth. Scott Alexander in the 15th is seventh. And the 81 and 99, Bobby White and Greg Seward, the last two cars that I can pick up here right now. But we've got a lot of good races going on all over the track. And, and uh, you've got to be sharp in traffic because this is where it all happens. There's George Koskulix dropping to the low side, trying to work John Fleming there. 
what you do is you, you look ahead, you got to race three or four cars ahead, and you got to say, now, where am I going to get in line that I can get underneath that guy? Where is he going to get boxed? Who's playing the trap for me? I guess it's like hockey, eh? Neutral there, zone oh, trap. boy, Sean Tucker almost got under the six of George Koskulix. Now, there's the box. John Fleming's boxed in. George, if George can get high. He's not going to do it. He, he followed him right no, down in he's low. Caught in the, he's caught in the same trap. Yep. Now, John, right on the brakes of 70 of Jerry Curtis, almost. Now, George is boxed in. Yeah, yeah, he's going to squeeze an opening, and Sean Tucker, he's going too, so. Good courteous, good, yeah. some courtesy there from the the slower drivers are letting these guys some, through. And some outstanding driving by the guys in the, at the front of the pack. There, that, that it is. Yeah, oh, down in turn one, the 21 of Dave Pierce is sideways, 52 of Sean Tucker is through. The 52 of Sean Tucker through the pack, the yellow flag is out. Who's going to come out into third out of all this? Sean Tucker did make it through. Sean Tucker was the car through. The six and the tw and the 97 of John Fleming were. So Sean Tucker is now in. No, they go back to the last completed lap. So John Fleming uh, will be. I'm not sure where they go there, uh, Barry. The 48 of Dave Oblinas is not being real polite to some of his pit crew. He said, "You're not telling me quick enough." So. Oh, he's, Scott he's, Pier or Dave Pierce has got had something leak out of his car. It's way up okay. in the turn in between turn one and two. So we're going to be a while cleaning this up. So we're going to take it to a break. And we're going to have a little interview, a brief interview with Dan Horseman. And uh, we'll go to that right now. If I know in my business, sponsorship is very important for programming. And it's just as important in, in stock car racing. Yes, it is. Yes. With you're a little bit different than some of the other drivers. I noticed that you do some work with the IWK. Maybe you could explain a little bit about how your car works with the IWK. Uh, we started that program a few years ago. We had one of our crew members that had a child that the IWK saved their life. who was very close to all of us. So I went down to the director of patient services and asked, like, what can we do to give something back? So we hit on upon the idea that we, uh, we, we paint the car. If you look at my car, it's cartoon characters and Taz, and that's my nickname. Uh, that's for the kids. And the kids really feel like it's their car. Like, they're cheering for me. I get the cards every week that they know I finished third or they know I finished fifth. It gives them something to look forward to. The other thing it does is the people in the stands, it touches them. And I've had people walk out of the stands and come down and donate money for the IWK. The other thing it does is it's very good for the sponsors because they certainly don't mind being attached to a cause that worthy. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Can-Am Speedway in Barishwa, New Brunswick. I'm Barry Johnson along with Al Robinson. We are on lap number 30. We had a caution into between turn one and two as Dave Pierce got a little spun around and had some fluid leak out of his car onto the track of some sort. Just making the last attempt to get things lined up. There's, I think they're traveling too, too uh, slow myself. I'd be worried about what the temperature is in some of these, but Dave Pierce back in the pack, and Alan Vincent, the uh, lap car, could have, been on the, could have been on the front of the pack and decided to go to the back to get out of the way. So that's a, a thank you to him for, uh, from the rest of the guys. If he's a little bit off the pace, he's a lot better up there. So. And the 24 car of Scott Livingston yeah. has went into the pit and got the driver's door tore off, so to speak. The unknown soldier in the back stretch. And Dave Oblinas has a little less tin on his car right now too and fiberglass he's got the hood taken off and the front corner panel on the driver's side is, is off cuts down in the aerodynamics but uh, makes it a little lighter not much but a little bit you see Dave Pierce with no hood on and the pace truck has gone into his little okay. doghouse over there going green right now lap 31 Steve Pettipas got the green flag up and we're going to get ready for a race and your race leader is John Fleming. The, the slower cars are on the inside here, folks. Don't think the number eight's in second place. Your second place car is the number six car of George Koskulix. And in third is the 52 car of Sean Tucker. Fourth is Rick McCracken, who went up high. Dave Gorbett now is going to sneak in underneath him. And Wayne Smith followed right in behind him. Oh, George got him. Look, John Fleming's got himself boxed in. The 48 car going by. Whoa. Uh-huh. So there's some racing, there's folks. There's some racing going on here. George Koskielich right now is your race leader. Yeah. And the number 77 car, no, 97 car, John Fleming is in second, but second Dave Corvette's in third now. Now Dave Corvette gets boxed in. But the inside rows and roll is moving right now, so. 
That's the fastest line right now. 15 car just going off the track. I hear, hear him. Gonna, he's got a flat tire, so. No, he didn't go off. No, he's going next time around. And that's Scott Alexander. Wow, he's doing a pretty good job to hang on to that car with a flat tire. Yeah, he's All got right. the right rear just about down. See some smoke coming out of the 22 of Fred Driscoll. Boy, George showing real power there. I mean, he's made, I mean, I guess the other guys are racing hard against themselves, and when you're racing other cars, it's a lot different than running uh, three and four wide. Now, George going in hard underneath. Your second place car now is Dave Gorvette. Third yeah. is 97 of John Fleming. Fourth is 52 of Sean Tucker. And fifth is number 71 of Rick McCracken. Nineteen cars off the, off the pace in the back, and I believe it's a panhard bar there. Boy, Freddie Driscoll's got himself in a real pile there. Around he goes. Ooh, Fred Driscoll's gone yeah. to the infield. Ooh, he pulls out a little dangerously right well, beside Dave Oblinas. It's the slowest part of the track, so you got to come out where the where the slow part is. George Koskulich is just stretching it. He's going to put a lap on Scott Alexander, who's out there just kind of waiting for a yellow flag at that great rear tire down. Oh, oh. hit hard, real oh. hard Scott, down there. Chris 79 Duncan. Of Chris Duncan, the 22 of Fred Driscoll, and the 35 of Brad Mann, all three of them in. The yellow flag is out. Another misfortune for Chris Duncan. Just got that car back together and he's going to have to go back to the garage again. We're going to be a while here, folks, as the ambulance does go out. Oh, they're calling for the ambulance to pull right up. He may be hurt in there, folks. He's calling for a tow truck. Moving the ambulance out of the Move way. The ambulance out of the way. Yeah, he wants to call for a tow truck. As you see right there in your monitor, a lot of damage done to that car again. Well, he certainly got some major rear clip damage. The 80 of Kevin Moore sitting there sideways in turn three. He's got some front end damage done there, so. And the 89 car of Donald Chisholm is on the infield with some with a smashed in passenger side, yeah. right side. He's trying wow. To, trying to get a push there too. So. so how soon the pack is thinned out. We hope Chris Duncan is okay. The ambulance has pulled away, so obviously he is okay. Yeah, Mark Foster, their uh, NASCAR official in the corner, having a, having a good talk with him. Donald, Donald Chisholm, Chisholm is on his way. On his way. He just got a little bit of tin work to pull out, so he's headed pit side. So we're going to be a little while here, folks, getting things cleaned up. and oh, They're hooking on to Chris Duncan already. He's staying in the car, so. So now we're going to take it to an interview with Al Robinson and Sean Tucker that they did a little bit earlier today. Al talks a little bit with Sean on his season and a little bit about the... Uh, Sean takes us on a bit of a tour of his race car. So. On a, yeah, there we go, on a tour of his race car. You know more about it than I do, Al. Yeah. You should have introduced it. So uh, I, Sean Tucker should be doing my job. He can talk. <laughs> Good guy. I, I teased them. I said, like, Darcy's his brother and his crew chief. And I said, like, Darcy, you don't stand a chance of getting a job in TV. Your brother's <laughs> got it all. So anyway, we're going to take it to an interview between with Al Robinson and Sean Tucker. Um, Sean, what are you thinking about today? Actually, today I'm thinking about winning the race. Uh, the rookie thing, uh, it'll just take care of itself. We can run good today. That's all I'm looking for. Uh, you've been out for one uh, practice session. Uh, you got a few laps on. I see you taking some tire temperatures and stuff. What was your first reaction and what you got for a car out of you? Uh, right at the moment, the car is real, real loose. Uh, we'll adjust on it, and I'm, I'm sure we can get it pretty close towards the race maybe, time. Maybe you take us for a little uh, look-see underneath here, and we can we can show the people uh, back at home exactly what we what there's underneath one of these mass car cars, and uh, you can explain a little bit as we go on. So yeah, we'll sure. have a look. We've got uh, what people would call a conventional coil over spring. I run mine a little different than most people. Most people have theirs on top of the shock. Uh, I run it this way here because it does promote a little more bite for our car, and uh, I like it this way. 
um, you get your disc brakes, which the cars have four-wheel disc brakes clear around, and uh, this really helps the cars entering the corner to get them slowed down so you can get around the corner. Next thing, you'll notice the, the differential in the car. The differential is not like your conventional differential. You can take the back cover off, changing the gear ratio, so you can change gear ratio for your car from track to track to get the proper RPMs. Okay, we do run the power steering pump off the rear differential. What this does, this allows the motor to spin up quicker RPMs and then giving us more power to the rear wheels. Sean, I see you got a, a little package here in front of you, a uh, set of quick change gears, 648 marked on them. Does that actually mean you're running 648 to one in this? You're turning that motor that high? Today we're not actually running 648s. So we've got a gear in the car right now, it's a 600. Uh, 648s would just give us a little too much today and the track doesn't have enough bite in it today. And what that would mean, we would spin the tires coming off the corner rather than trying to get bite coming off. Okay, uh, can you show us uh, exactly where those gears go in? Yeah, sure can. Uh, if you look right in here at the rear differential, yeah. there's little red nuts right here. Yeah. If you pull that cover off, there's two spline shafts that come out, and these little gears, they're splined as well, and they just slide over top. Okay. You can change the gears in a matter of minutes, 10 minutes at the most. And, that's why they call it a quick change, right? That's right, yeah, exactly. Okay. And uh, actually, it's a nice piece. It's a real nice piece. What would that rear end weigh com compared to a conventional car rear end? I'm, I, to be honest with you, I've never really compared both of them, but I'm sure that it's, uh, it's probably in the range of 50 to 75 pounds lighter, I would say. I notice uh, uh, an aluminum drive shaft in it. Of course, that must be for uh, reciprocating weight. You it don't want to spin any more than you have to. It definitely is, yeah. Um, the aluminum dry shaft does work nice. Also, notice up through the car, uh, quite, a, quite a few uh, suspension components that are very adjustable. Uh, that helps. That Well, when it comes to suspension components, uh, all these trailing arms, things like that, what this will do, if you can, if you know how to adjust them, it'll help the car turn in the middle or give it more bite coming off or maybe loosen it up a little bit going in. And uh, once you learn how to run these things, you can really get your car handling really well. The um, exhaust system? Exhaust system. Underneath, underneath the car? Is that like a cannon inside when you're driving, or do you really hear that? Actually, it's quieter than what most people would think. It's a, it's a two-into-one system. It's just one big, big muffler, and uh, it makes the car really quiet, and it actually helps horsepower. I don't know why it does that, but that's the dyno, the engine dyno does say that, and uh, makes the car quiet. I find that's easier for the fans to watch races, quieter race cars. Notice uh, to the rear of the rear end uh, a nice red fuel cell. Uh, definitely there for safety. Definitely uh, for safety. How many gallons does that hold? Uh, fuel cell holds 22 gallons. Um, it's got a, a rubber type bladder inside, so if you do happen to get into a heavy impact from the rear, um, instead of maybe breaking open the fuel all over the place, this will compact a long ways before it has actually breaks. So it's a it's a big safety feature in the car. Well, Sean, we've taken up plenty of your time today. I know you're anxious to get back out to the track for the next practice session. Thank you very much for spending the, the time with us, explaining a few of the finer components of a race car, and good luck today in the rookie chase and looking for a race win. Thank you very much. I'll do it any time for you, boys. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to NASCAR 99 on TVMB, as you see a replay here of Fred this accident. Uh, Fred Driscoll uh, got together with uh, Dave Gorvette, just a case, just a case of uh, three wide uh, isn't impossible. It's just not probable. And uh, Dave trying to get underneath. Just uh, these cars are right on the edge. He just kind of catches Fred's left rear and loosens the car up enough, and it just goes for a spin. Fred does a great job of holding the car uh, down, down off or down on the on the uh, infield area, and prevents it from coming back up and catching the rest of the rest of the pack. So as we get things lined up here and everybody into position, we got the, some of the cars crossed over here. So we're going to get a shot, a uh, picture here on your screen of Chris Duncan's car as it goes by on the back of a tow truck. A lot of, probably a lot of bent, bent uh, equipment in there. You see the back end, the back bumper hanging off of it, and Chris Duncan gives a wave to the crowd right there as you see him going by the front grandstand. People showing their appreciation, give him a hand. That's two races in a row for that poor fellow that he hasn't been able to finish. And he's had a real good car here the last two or three races. But there's no big rush anymore now to get that car ready for a race unless he's going to run a pro stock somewhere. But... Uh,
Bartho, and you see the Donnie Chisholm car. He must have went in just to get things checked out, and he still has the tin on the right side, still intact. It's yeah. bent in, but it's intact. Uh, there's a bracket just on the on the little wing in front of the front right front wheel, and uh, they just bent that uh, bar back out to make sure they had tire clearance so they wouldn't have a rub. Dave Corvette is in the pit area. A lot of guys on the radio right now complaining about, uh, or on the scanner, complaining about t uh, engine temperatures. They're up in the 230, 240 range, so... You know, we started with 26, we've got uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. We've got 20 cars back on the track, and they got a rolled up green coming this time, so. Lights have gone out in the pace truck, so we're going to go racing next time around. So your race leader right now is the number six car of George Koskulix, and second is 97, John Fleming. And in third is the 40, 44 car of Wayne Smith, and in behind him is Bobby White in the 81. And your rookie points leader, the 52 car of Sean Tucker. Big Steve Pettipaw has got the green flag up, and we're going to go racing here at Can-Am Speedway in Barrois, New Brunswick. You're watching NASCAR Tour 99 on TVMB. Oh, we got a spin and turn one. Rick McCracken and... Rick Stewart, Dave Pierce, three of them gone. Dave Pierce, I think, came a little too hard on the brake. Yellow's out. Whoa. 81 of Bobby White hard in the back of 44 Wayne Smith when Scott or uh, Sean Tucker had to scoot right up almost to the wall to make sure he didn't get clipped from behind. Dave Pierce spun out just before it. I think he came a little too hard on the brake and spun out. Rick McCracken has got his car going, but he's going to go into the pit area. Uh, McCracken's got a fair amount of damage in the left front. And Greg Seward, his car has not moved yet. You see the racer chaser going out to give him a push. Ninety-nine of Greg Seward. They're moving now under his, under his own power, waiting for his. Uh, oh, he's no, he's getting not pushed. moving under his own power. Looks like he's got a left. Oh, he's got. Uh, he's got rear end problems. Oh, she he's dropped a, right he, out he, on he, him. No, he's got a trailing bar bre uh, broken or a panhard bar broke. One of the two. How easily remedied is that right now, Al? Uh, panhard bar they can fix in five minutes. Uh, if it's lower bar, it's probably about the same, but it's not an easy job to do. And you don't know what else he bent doing it, whether it's bent shocks or whatever. It's the same thing that happened to the Driscoll car earlier in the day, and he took out the drive shaft and the panhard bar in one shock. So, um, with the rear end wobbling back and forth, it looks to me like, uh, and I couldn't tell from that view whether it was side to side or back and forth. If it's side to side, is the panhard bar gone? So, uh, Greg's being very ginger, getting it, uh, getting it back to the to the pit area, and uh, we'll soon see. That's uh, an incident that he could ill afford, for sure. So that was not a completed lap, I don't believe, and we're going to have to restart again. I'm losing track on the cautions here. I don't know if that was the fourth or fifth. Boys, they got to pick up some engines. Uh, some. That was the fourth caution. Wayne Smith. George Koskulik George stalled. Co George Koskulik's car has quit. Oh, unlucky break for him. Well, he'll get his spot back, I think. If we get it going without going yeah. into the pit. Yeah. Yeah, need the chaser. Rick McCracken returning to the track with his car patched up. You see the chaser driver walking around down there where the chaser is. Oh, now he's, he's he run. just realizes yeah. he runs back to it yeah. now. Hey, I got a stranded patient out there. I got to get out there. And George is probably saying, yeah, hurry up and get over here and help me. Hopefully it just stalled it for George's sake and nothing else. As the sun starts to slowly going down, it's getting a little later in the evening. Oh, there's oh, George he's trying, to trying to get things going. There it there goes. He goes. Chaser scared him. Yeah. It fired on its own. He's lucky. <laughs> A bunch of guys behind him, I, I, I bet you are having an ah, oh, too bad. George, a real contender, though. A real competitor, probably a better way of putting it. Always a contender. Yes, I would imagine John Fleming was saying, boy, I hope you don't get going. you got to go into the pit. Yeah. On the back stretch, we get a camera on the back stretch and the pit entrance coming in turn three. You'll see the 79 of Chris Duncan returning to the field. Wow. <laughs> 
He so honestly didn't do a whole lot of damage. No. Just structural, or uh, yeah. cosmetic, I guess Got you could call it. The helmet back on, and uh, hats off to Bob Duncan and Mike Rogers and, and the rest of the guys that are working down there. I'm not sure his crew, but... Uh, and I think he's only down a lap. Uh, he wouldn't be down a lap because they didn't complete a lap. They didn't complete that one? No, so he'd still be on the lead lap. As you can see, he's yeah. a got a little less uh, luggage on board, but yeah. uh, the back bumper, <laughs> holy shit. Yeah. There's a good shot of the rear end of the car anyway. So hats off to that crew, getting things checked out and getting him back out on the racetrack. <laughs> I wonder if he sell the car as is right now at a cheaper price. Uh, if it's still run that quick, there's not a whole lot there that, that got hurt. So, <laughs> bet you they throw in some body panels and say thank you. Yeah. But there's some other cars there for sale. No, no signs on them. Uh, six George Koskubik has a, has a car for sale. Uh, the um, 52 of Sean Tucker, of course, he's in that business, always has a car for sale. Uh, 15 of uh, Scott Alexander, I believe, but they have a new car coming this year, so I would presume that probably they have a unit for sale. So uh, That's been a good car. So. How much would one of these cars sell for? We'll say uh, Scott Alexander's. How much would his be worth? Uh, I would say Scott Alexander's car, um, less the engine, would be in the fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 range. Put the engine so, in it. Uh, let's go to 35, between 35 and 45. Wow. So, and the Ford engines are a little bit more money to build than the Chevys, but I mean, you could buy, you could go out there and you probably, this time of year, buy a competitive car from just about any one of these guys in, in the in the $20,000 range. You know, it's not, it's the stuff that you have to buy to get the car to the, to the racetrack and the, and the parts you have to buy to fill the trailer that are going to put you in the poorhouse. And of course, then you have the tire bill and the gas bill weekly and it goes on and on. You just don't tell your wife about it. <laughs> you may just leaked out some secrets. Stuff that they uh, bought, they just didn't bother saying anything. Yeah. I had a grandfather like that one time. He used to buy stuff and my grandmother never knew about it. So as we wait... I guess what um, we should mention here, maybe Barry, that uh, on the 18th of... Uh, of September on Saturday, uh, if anybody has uh, is sitting home and, and looking for a, a TV or a race to watch, um, Scott Frazier is going to be in uh, Loudon, New Hampshire, in the Bush North car. Uh, they've got a, a car rented from uh, Ted Christopher. Uh, Ted Christopher being one of the, the top uh, racers in New England at this time. A um, bunch of guys, a bunch of, of team owners and interested fans have got together and, and uh, Put a package together for Scott Fraser. They rented a car for the weekend, and I know everybody at NASCAR and everybody at uh, is a NASCAR fan and a stock car fan in Atlanta, Canada. Certainly wishes wishes uh, Scott Fraser all the best, and uh, I for one would like to see him uh, win the race down there. Uh, I know he'll put a, a real show on for everybody. The lights have gone out in the pace truck. Steve Pettipaw's got the green flag. The 99 car of Greg Seward is back, and so is the 79 car of Chris Duncan, and we're going racing. As George Koskielix takes the lead once again. John Fleming falling close behind, and so is the number 44 car of Wayne Smith. In fourth is the 81 of Bobby White. In fifth is the 52 car of Sean Tucker. I believe sixth is the 48 car of no, Dave. The 48 is a lap car. I okay. would say sixth would be the 70 car of uh, Jerry Curtis. And there we have uh, the eight car pushed hard going in. He and David Wayne both got kind of hung out. That's the eight car of Leo Cochran. Leo Cochran, yeah. These are some of the drivers that aren't always with us on the tour each and every week, so. Al and I are a little slow on the names. Um, Leo and I go back 15 years or better. So back into the 70s. So uh, Leo's no stranger to me for sure. Remember his girls as, as little girls and now they're now they're ladies. So uh, we all we all get old together, but Leo's been around for with us for a long time. Great guy. And George Koskulik stretching his uh, stretching his lead out, showing some some good some good power there. And John Fleming is uh, ri riding in good on him in the corners, but George is showing some horsepower on the straightaways coming out. Wayne Smith. In search of his uh, second NASCAR uh, Tour Championship, running along in third, Bobby White in fourth, and John Tucker rounds out your top five. Coming down onto the racetrack here, moment very shortly is 19 of Tim Rogers. Yeah, so he got his car fixed too. So the other guys, I mean, nobody quits. Last day, they still all want to be racers. So hats, well, uh, hats off to Tim Rogers and Earl and his crew, and, and uh, glad to have them back on the track. People come here to see the cars racing, and these, and these drivers know that, so they want to get out there, and even though it is the last race, earn as many points as they can, show a good finish, work on next year's race season. Talk about a guy in a move, Greg Seward, in the last four laps has passed nine cars. Excuse me, 10, he just moved by uh, uh, Kevin Moore from Fredericton. So, and he's uh, eyeing up 35 yeah. car Brad Mann. Yeah. So you asked how long it takes to put a bar in the rear end, now we know. Not very long. Not very long, <laughs> no. no. 
So we got quite a race here now for first between number six, George Koskielix, and the 97 of John Fleming. Yeah. And Bobby White and Wayne Smith are having quite a race for third. So a lot of little races going on within the race. And Bobby White goes on by Wayne Smith. And I just wish we could show you the large picture of this race because it's <laughs> to watch everything all at once, folks, it's quite Half, a job. Halfway this time by. Halfway so. money goes to the number six, George Koskielix. Thank you to Skull Link for the, their sponsorship there. So lap 50 now completed. We're going on to lap number 51. John Fleming and George Koskielix playing a little cat and mouse there. But George not giving them the inside, but they're going to come up to some lap traffic here pretty soon. John's got a whole bunch of guys on the radio, and they're all cheerleaders. You can do it, John. You can do it. Come on, John. We got him. You're the man. We should also yeah. mention, uh, Al, a buddy yeah. of yours from Fredericton's on the infield taking some pictures of yeah, Terry, this race. Terry Curtis from All Sport Photography. He's got some great shots of, the, of all the NASCAR guys. we got uh, Kevin, Moore spun, Kevin out. Moore spun out. Coming out of turn number yeah. two. And he's off the track, and he was having starter problems earlier in the day, so we may very well see a woo. Chris Duncan has also got a, a door panel kind of waving at him there, too, in the left-hand side. Looks like he's ready for take flight here. <laughs> the wings are out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's getting meatballed. He's got to go in. Yeah, he's going in, yeah. Next time around, he'll go in. Yellow is out. Kevin Moore cannot get that car started. Good call by Steve Pettipal. You don't want a car sitting out there in no man's land. No, so evident the car wasn't going to move. You don't sit there and watch yourself, watch the race run away from you if you can't get it going, so... Racer chaser moving already. So. Chris Duncan going in to get some hardware removed from that car. Some cosmetic surgery. So another caution comes out. And as the caution comes out and they're going to get Kevin Moore's car going, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we will be on more green flag racing here. And NASCAR Tour 1999 is coming to a real quick close, Al. And when we come back, we'll go green flag racing here on TVMB. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to NASCAR 99. I'm Barry Johnson, along with Al Robinson. And we are on, I believe, Al 52, or 50, lap 55. Lap 55. I missed some laps there somewhere. No, Steve, <laughs> I just called going green on 55, so we've got 54 complete. Wow. Okay, this so race is really going by fast. Steve Pettipaw's got the flag ready. So George Koskielix is your race leader. In second is the 97 of John Fleming. Third is Bobby White, and fourth is 44, Wayne Smith, and fifth is the 52 car of John Tucker. And I believe Dave Potter is the sixth car, and Scott Alexander is the seventh. George starting to open up a bit of a lead. Uh, George did that last time, and as soon as he gets uh, 10 or 12 laps in the tires, his car starts to go away, and John Fleming's car just starts to come in, so we'll see if that uh, history repeats itself. Just as we were off to break there, folks, I was listening in on the scanner, and a lot of the drivers are complaining that it's very, very hot with a few expletives in between there. And uh, it does get pretty warm up there, but a lot of them are saying the sun's starting to go down, and in between 3 and 4, it's a little cooler, getting a little bit of a breeze out there. So they're hoping that it cools off a little bit. And Wayne Smith running a real cautious race there in the front. He just left the 52 with Sean Tucker move by on the outside, so... As long as he stays up on the lead yep. lap, and uh, Craig Seward is now not going to pass him in the points. That's right. So it looks like maybe the Oval Outlaw, without jinxing anything, he won't say it right away. Well, he's just biding his way. So for a leisure oh, drive. John Fleming and George Kostulik said didn't take the 10 laps. John's working him on the inside. George has got the power coming out. John's got the car going in. There's George in high, and John Fleming below him. George showing him the opening, and yeah, John's John, going to take it. Yeah. Forcing George way up high. And Bobby White driving in like a bear behind, uh, beneath John. He's hoping that John can keep George out there, and he's going to slide. Oh, we got Dave Pierce yeah. turned around. Oh, a deer in the headlights right there. Yeah. Wow. What, what great driving! I I heard John Fleming's guy. You take her high, 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 high. So he's yelling in turn two. So that's a good job by the spotters. We see Dave Corvette coming back out onto the track now too. <clears throat> Dave Pierce gets going under his own steam. We have a 
Replay coming up of Dave Pierce spinning out into turn number one. As he comes around. Dave Pierce turned by the number 40 or 24, Scott Livingston. Right into the back of him and took him with him on his way by. Wow. So very uncharacteristic of Scott Livingston. Definitely into, into Dave, Dave Pierce's lane and just, just uh, give him that little helping hand. So, and then great driving by the rest of the guys as they follow through, all to avoid uh, Dave Pierce. Great job by the spotters. And the, and the leaders coming through right behind. <clears throat> so Dave Corvette back out on the racetrack. But he'll be at the back of the pack now, unfortunately. Well, he must have had some major problems because he missed a, he missed a quite a few of, laps. Missed a bunch of laps, yeah. Dave Corvette was fourth in points. 1,356, 108 points behind Wayne Smith. How many points ahead of Sean Tucker? Uh, about 48. Okay. So this is a possibility this, this that Sean Tucker can win to fourth. Move, could move up into fourth place, is right. As a rookie, so that's a, yeah. a pretty so darn good finish. Right now, Sean Tucker running in third. Dave Garvett running in, or, uh, yeah, in three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. At least 15 spots back, which is, third, which is a 30-point differential, so it's certainly going to bunch them up anyway. I guess we have to say, uh, you know, congratulations so far to Sean Tucker. We certainly don't want to jinx anybody, like you said earlier, but uh, uh, as a, a first-year uh, regular on the NASCAR Tour, Sean Tucker has had a fantastic year. And he won the first race of the season at Moosehead Premium Drive Speedway, and he's, he's followed it through with a, with a steady run. We see Dave Oblinas coming back out again. I'd just like to take this moment to uh, give a, a special thank you on behalf of TVMB to all the racetracks who have been super to us, whether it be on setup and where we can set up our cameras and and everything else that goes with that and uh, as far as meals go. And I'd just like to say a special thank you, and uh, we really appreciate what you people have done for us. And uh, we hope to see you all again next year at the racetracks. And also to NASCAR. Al, you guys have been great for us, and uh, you coming on board and doing some commentating with us has been a real help. It certainly wasn't the plan, Barry, but, uh, you know. <laughs> Things do change. That's right. That's right. Change is good, they say. At the same time, I guess I get my two cents worth in here, and, and I'll get my two cents later. You're going to get your two cents right yeah. about now, Al, because yeah. uh, you and I did sit down earlier this week and uh, had a little chit-chat about uh, this year and, and the, forth and the forthcoming year in NASCAR. So we're going to... Uh, we're going to go to that interview now, and uh, we were sitting in Al's backyard, and as you can see, it's a beautiful spot there on the lake. So we're going to go to the interview with Al Robinson and myself. Was it as successful as you hoped it would have been back in the spring? Did everything work out for you people at NASCAR? Well, Barry, I, I'd say uh, for sure we're more than pleased with the way things have gone. Uh, we were a little bit late getting things together. We had a lot of internal problems uh, with drivers and crews and officials and the whole bit last fall. Uh, we really had to, to shake the gremlin, gremlin off our back and, and gather ourselves back up and, and have some meetings with the tracks and among our members and, and get things sorted out. And uh, extremely happy to have CarQuest come on board as a tour sponsor. And uh, that's probably the, the, the biggest jump and the, the, you know, to have a major corporation like CarQuest show faith in us. Uh, really built everybody's uh, hopes up for a successful season and I think we've carried it through from that time. Uh, you know, to the present, uh, had very successful uh, uh, races, uh, competition extremely tight. Um, you know, going into the last week here tonight, uh, today, 11 cars that could have won the uh, could have won the championship. Uh, I don't think you could ask for anything any better. Uh, a lot of drivers complained during the season of in inconsistency, whether it be in the rules and how the rules were enforced, or how the scoring was done, and, and the, you know, a lot of them complain of favoritism with one driver's mother-in-law as a scorer. Do you want to respond to some of that and let us know what exactly went on there and what were some of the inconsistencies well, that drivers are complaining about? Well, first first of all, um, we had some staff changes, okay? People get used to doing things one way. Somebody else comes in, they have a little different train of thought. Uh, so, so things had to be switched, or some switches were made, things were changed around a little bit. Uh, as far as uh, having uh, an official, uh, an official's mother-in-law, as a chief scorer, uh, I mentioned on our internet page, and, and I, I don't mind telling anybody anytime they want to listen, that uh, there's certainly, uh, and I'll use her name uh, tonight because I certainly appreciate everything that, that Verda Jackson has done for NASCAR, uh, there's not a, a nicer person, more honest, dependable, 
uh, giving of her time for, for uh, you know, as a volunteer than Verda Jackson. I mean, she's a, she's a fantastic person. She's a pleasure to work around. And uh, for anybody to even question her integrity is, is totally ludicrous. And, and uh, as far as, uh, you know, drivers complaining about scoring and stuff, if they came up to the tower and they just watched for a night, they'd understand how things work. Okay? If the, if the spotters would watch around their car, they'd know where they are. Uh, you've seen uh, by watching me in the tower that most nights I can count out the first, the first 10 cars or better. You know where the lap cars are if you watch the field. So what happens is, is the guys get centered on themselves, okay? They're only watching their own car and they're making presumptions, okay? When, we get, when they have a chance to get the uh, scoring books out, and the books are open, of course, any time for the drivers to have a look at, Verda can always explain, and it's not only Verda. We have uh, uh, two other ladies that work in the tower, and we did, u we did use one of the staff from uh, uh, NBIS when we were there to help us out. So uh, we've got uh, Brenda Foster in the, sh in the, in the uh, uh, tower, and we've got Lavonna Stevens in the tower. Uh, Part-time this year, we've had my wife who scored uh, with Mascar for 15 years and has scored at Riverglade Speedway and, and a couple other tracks here in the past. Um, and we've also had Arlene Driscoll uh, from Halifax who's helped us out with lap cars on the, big, on the bigger events. And I don't think there's any problem with the scoring. Um, it'd be nice to have an electronic, method or an electronic scoring system uh, like the big guys use, but it's a $35,000 deal and you need financing. You need a sponsor to buy it. Then you need uh, somebody to, to come from track to track with you. It, it would be the same as coming in and setting up your TV gear. You know, there's, there's, uh, you have to cut lines in the track, you have cables to lay, you have lasers to set out, you have transponders to put in the cars, you have to make sure your batteries are all charged, um, you've got to uh, have a computer in the tower, and it just, it just runs into another great, big, huge expense, which in all reality, we just can't afford. What can we expect for the millennium? I mean, we're going into a new century, it's year 2000. What do you people at Mascar have to do this winter? I know you have a lot of uh, look at some of the rules and say, well, can we change this? Can we change that? Implement some new rules, maybe take out some old ones. What do you and possibly Ken Packham and the rest of your uh, crew have to do? Well, my end will basically be uh, uh, tracks, negotiations with tracks, putting a schedule together, which I hope to have announced by the uh, 1st of October. Um, as far as rules go, uh, I believe some of the drivers and some inter interested parties, which will probably include myself, are going to sit down and they're going to look at uh, the, the points they feel that they have. Uh, we have areas for concern, and we're going to make the adjustments accordingly. Um, I have been passing out questionnaires to the drivers because we have to remember this is a driver's tour. Okay, this tour belongs to the drivers. It's for the drivers, um, and I just work for these drivers as a volunteer. Basically, and you, we talked before we went on camera. Uh, I'd like to consider myself the general manager of NASCAR. I oversee uh, basically everything. Dave Dixon is uh, the race director on race day. Uh, Mark Foster, Fred Driscoll look after the technical end of things. The women we've already mentioned in the tower. We have Dave Dixon's uh, wife, Anne Marie, who's helping out with the souvenirs now. Um, and we have uh, children of the volunteers, of the mascar officials. Basically, they look after the program sales. So it's, uh, it's a family plan. But uh, to get back to your original question, uh, the, big, the big hurdle is... Uh, been already been done. Okay, we carried it at first of '99. We do have a three-year agreement with CarQuest for tour sponsorship. So, to be able to go into other major corporate companies and say, okay, we're, we represent CarQuest, one of the largest uh, parts stores, automotive parts stores in North America, in the world. Okay, these are the people that believe in us. These are the references we can provide you. This is what we've done for them, and this is what we can do for you. So this is Ken Packham's job to to move in. We we. Uh, we, we want to say uh, thank you to people like Skull Inc., Robert Logan, who've been with us for the last uh, five or six years, uh, a fantastic sponsor. Uh, it was great to have Chrysler Corporation on board this year. Uh, we certainly hope to have Atlantic Lottery back on board next year. They were, they were absent this year, but as we all know, there a, uh, was a lot of strife in Atlantic Lottery with the, the Nova Scotia withdrawal and, and whatever, and, and uh, things just got kind of mixed up. But we're really hoping to have them back on board. We've had some talks already, uh, and they're very positive. And as you see, ladies and gentlemen, they're going down around the back straightaway. We're going to go getting, just getting set for green flag racing here. Lap 61. Lap 61, 39 more to go. And your race leader now is the 97 car of John Fleming. He did get by George Koskiel just before the caution. And I'd like to say I hope you appreciated the uh, interview that we just showed you with Al Robinson. And we'll have another part to that coming up a little later on in the show, possibly maybe on the next caution. I must say, I've never seen Wayne Smith run such a reserved race. Well, <laughs> uh, oh, we got a car in turn one, off Rick the track. Rick McCracken, down low on the inside. Oh, thought he was going to oh, pull out there. He's running. 
George Koskulik looking down on the inside of John Fleming as they go down around the back straightaway. Rick McCracken gets it going. No caution. Good, good job by the race director and the flagman. The afternoon has been quite long as it is. We don't need any more cautions out here. And now John Fleming's getting some slower traffic. Maybe George can use that to his advantage, but George got to look in the rearview mirror and see Bobby White. Timmy Rogers uh, staying right down low out of the way. Helping him out the best he can. Dave Oblin is just putting a mark on Dave, uh, Dana Duncan and Wayne Smith working to go by him on the, on the inside too. And Wayne Smith just picked up one spot on Sean Tucker. So every time you think you got something figured out, something else happens. Sean Tucker following right in behind Wayne Smith. Wherever Wayne's going, Sean's following right behind him. George, John Fleming is not opening up much of a lead on George. George a little loose going into some of these turns. Now, now they got the lap car of uh, 71, Rick McCracken. He's going to get the blue and yellow move over. Now. Whoa, we got the 88 and the 99. Didn't turn one. Turn oh, Greg Seward. Uh, Dave Pierce spins to avoid the melee. Yellow's out. Yellow's out. And Kevin Moore just at the last minute got by Dave Pierce. Oh, he's got something just squirted out of the engine area. It looked like a, I don't know, there's an overflow there for coolant or something, or it just looked like a, a squirt gun squirted out of his engine. So there's a little coolant down there on the track of some sort. Somebody's squirting water real bad, I'm hearing. Well, I think it's out of the Dave, Dave Pierce car. I'm just gonna get a drink of water here, Barry, because I don't know how, if it's hot in the racetrack. It's worse up here, that's for sure. So, while uh, Al's going to get a drink of water, you see the track crew coming out to clean up the little bit of a water spill that was there on the track. And here's your race leader going around now, the 97 car of John Fleming. So now we will go to part two. As I said, we have another part two, this interview with Al, as we talk about the upcoming year and what has gone on during the year and uh, what we can look for in the way of races and how many races and what tracks we may be going to and maybe even some new ones we're going to see this year. So we'll take it back to part two of myself and Al Robinson. Speaking of tracks, what other are there any other new tracks going to uh, come into the picture next year? Or are there some tracks maybe going to be left out in the cold? Well, we're looking at a, a right now um, a 15 race schedule, and this is just based on on the questionnaires that we passed out to the drivers. Okay, and what I asked the drivers in this questionnaire is, how many races do you want to run in in uh, 19 or in, in 2000? What do you what do you see as a as a new millennium for NASCAR? And um, how many races do you want to see at each track? And below I I list it each track in Atlantic Canada, uh, which also included Petty Raceway, which we haven't been in, uh, haven't raced at since Labor Day in 1994. And I also included uh, uh, Island Speedway in Cape Breton in Sydney, uh, that belongs to the Dix family, which we haven't raced at since 1997. Um, the response that I got from the drivers at that time was that they would prefer, uh, they definitely do not want to race in Sydney, okay? They would prefer not to go back to the Miramichi. Um, however, they do want to go to Petty Raceway. and. Uh, Based on the numbers that I receive from those drivers, uh, I'm working on that format right now. I've talked to some of the tracks. I haven't talked to them all, uh, but I feel confident. Um, my biggest problem is I've got tracks that want more races than are available. Yeah. We live in an area that, that uh, we're geographically depressed, I guess. The sun doesn't shine long enough. Our season's too short. And uh, if, I t if I gave all the tracks all the races they wanted, we'd race from the 1st of April till the sno snow flies and it's not possible. So we have to sit down with the tracks and, and weed things out. Uh, we definitely don't want to be in the same area two weeks uh, back to back. We'd like to go to it'd be New Brunswick and Nova Scotia back and forth uh, with a couple of races in the island. Um, races that are confirmed, we will start next year. Um, I'm sorry, I can't say where we'll start next year. We will be on Prince Edward Island for the long weekend in August, as we have been for the last three or four, four 200 lapper. Uh, and I think we'll be finishing uh, on Labor Day again next year too, and it looks like a 15 race deal. Uh, yeah, that's the, obviously good. I mean, that's good for the Internet. fans and good yes. for us here at TVMB too. I mean, we yeah. we get to show a lot of the races to the fans. We'd we'd like to start uh, the same way we did this year. Uh, go to go to Moosehead Premium Drive Speedway, the new racetrack in Halifax at the Atlantic Winter Fairgrounds. Um, if it is a little bit chilly, 
There's lots of uh, uh, indoor area where a person can go and get warm and get something hot to eat. There's a restaurant and stuff on site, on, uh, site there. Uh, the pit area is inside, so at least it's out of the wind and stuff. Uh, fans are, are welcome in the pit area there. You can, you can wander from outside and, and, and out and in uh, at your leisure. And uh, we, we'd, we'd certainly enjoyed being there with Ron Heffler and his staff, and, and I think that's probably where we will start next year. Uh, I'd expect that we'll be back at Andy Ganesh on the, on the high banks of Riverside Speedway for uh, three events. Uh, I'd expect we'll be at New Brunswick International Speedway for three events. We drew fantastic crowds uh, at MBIS this season. Uh, management uh, of the track, uh, Chris Johnson and, and um, Steve Burns have showed a real interest in having us back for, for our third uh, race. And CarQuest is a major sponsor at their track, so when you put the package all together, it only makes good, good sense for us to, uh, to go that way. And I really hope we can, we can work something out. Something I'd like to touch on, and I know a lot of people are asking uh, after watching today's race at Shediac, Arch Steves has retired. Um, mainly, I guess we, people are wanting to know why. He's very colorful to watch at the tracks. A lot of people are going to miss this guy, and uh, will we hopefully see him back in the year 2000? Um, that's a real good question. Uh, I'm not sure now. Basically, the, the situation uh, is a, a matter of a, a difference of opinion between myself uh, and Dave Dixon, the race director, and Art. And uh, the, uh, the bottom line is, in every business we have a boss, and uh, at Mascar on race night, Dave Dixon's the boss. And when he calls for something out of the tower, that's when it happens. Um, it caused confusion, and it's caused criticism. Uh, by us having some yellow flags that maybe Dave didn't call for in the tower or someone who said don't throw it and it's got thrown and I'm certainly not faulting Art in any way. Art Steves is, is a, uh, a brilliant volunteer. He's been with Mascar since day one. He raced with Mascar as a competitor. Uh, he knows both sides of the, of the field but um, at the same time we uh, it's uh, Art feels it's a question of safety. He thinks he should should have uh, the right to throw the flag anytime he wants and uh, we don't agree with that theory. Okay. So at that, uh, you know, we certainly have parted company as friends, uh, but that's that's really all I can say about it. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we are going to get ready here shortly. To go green flag racing. Hope you inter enjoyed that interview and tidbits of information about the tour and what you've seen and what you can expect for the next year as NASCAR tour. We'll be going into the millennium next year, the year 2000. That'll be, how many seasons will that make now going into next year, Al? I believe that's 18. 18 years. Yep. Wow. That should definitely make us the, the longest running tour in Canada. So don't be fooled by, oft, often imitate it, but never duplicate it by other tours. So NASCAR tour by no stretch of the imagination is the best tour going. Lots and lots of great action. As you can see it coming into your living room each and every week. I'm just having a look at the eight car, Leo Cochran. Mark, Mark Foster's not going to catch him. <laughs> He's not, uh, he was never called the world's fastest man, that's for sure. <laughs> you take quite a bit to catch one of those cars. Is yeah. it a wet tire or is that a new tire? Well, that's what they're trying to see. They want to see if that's oil on the, uh, coming out of the wheel, and if it is, they're going to... There's going. something all over the side of the car there too. Yeah. It looks like uh, trans or rear end grease. So that's what they're that's what they're wondering, and, and uh, they want them, they're trying to get them to stop. Probably doesn't want to stop. It kind of looks that way. You can see it all over the back of the car too. Yeah. It's like a tan color or a light red color yeah. on the number eight car going yeah. down the back straightaways. They're going to get them stopped this time. As you can see over there now. That's Mark Foster, is it, Al? Mark Foster is Ta it. taking a look at him there, and he's going to make him go to the pit area. I would, I would imagine. He says he's, he's got an axle seal gone. Send him to the pits. That's not easily fixed right away. Um, yeah, this fight, it's um, a floater type rear end in that. You take five bolts off a cap, and uh, uh, pull the pull the hub off the end. It's double splined axle. Comes off in your hand. You probably could fix that in uh, a minute and a half. Except. You have to clean the grease off and dry it off before you can put the new, fr the fresh silicone on. Uh -huh. So the other concern would be the rear end of the car is worth three or four thousand bucks. If it's leaked a bunch of fluid, how far is it down, and what damage is it going to do to it if we don't get it filled back up? As he comes right down As in he front comes, of us here, yeah, he's going down into the pit area. See some uh, Brad Mann fans right here in front of us, decked yeah. out in his uh, car colors and yeah. 
Capital City Roofing. One woman there has a, a headset on and must be talking to him off and on. She's probably spotting for him up here. I would imagine. Yeah, we're going green next time around, so uh, we finally get the show back on the road. On lap number 69. Yeah, Dave Dixon, race director, said, come on, guys, let's get your head screwed on straight, and let's get this race finished using some kind of style, some sort of style. So <laughs> Dave a little bit fed up with the uh, way things have dragged on today. Well, it's been a long day. And it's a long weekend, and I think yeah. Dave would rather be... Not that he doesn't love racing, but would like to be out doing something maybe a little else. And Dave Pierce. 21, Dave Pierce on the back stretch. Slowing right down. Wow, he just got off the track. Another yellow, yellow another yellow. We did not get a lap completed. So we are still on lap number 69. Yeah, hold your positions is the call from the from the tower, so. I would say it's 48 car Dave Oblina, so whether he got his lap back there or not. I was uh, watching the, the uh, Dave Pierce going by, so. I would say the way, at the speed Dave Oblina is moving to the back of the pack, he did get his lap back, so. 44, he's, he's moving the 44 car in turn one up one. I see the number 10 car going on the back of a trailer, leaving the Okay, so Tim McKay, Tim, Tim, McKay has Tim, Tim McKay has called it a day, and he's heading for home. So. Talked to Sean Pierce, the, to uh, Dave's son, earlier in the day. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, when we were going down through the uh, driver introductions, when I was talking to all the guys and kind of saying my, my uh, end-of-the-season farewells and see you at the banquet, uh, Sean said, yep, he said, we don't have to look at this one until first of May next year and he said well maybe after Christmas <laughs> so uh, yeah, you know you can be sure Dave Pierce and, and Sean and the rest of the boys in the, in the Pierce crew they'll be uh, back with us at the uh, start of the 2000 season well, some, 77 some, car Dave Garbeck just getting ready to return to the track too it's on pit road in the back stretch some of these guys it's, it's just in their blood they, they they wouldn't know what else to do with their time on the weekends Al, right. or, or in the evenings if they ever gave up racing I mean yeah. they'd, they'd go a little stir crazy and they'd have a sore thumb from clicking channel so yeah. much with the remote that They'd have to sit home and be a spectator and watch us here on TVNB, and I think they'd much rather be watched than watch. I'll, I'll tell you, uh, Barry, these guys watch TVNB. The guys from Nova Scotia get uh, have the guys from New Brunswick videotape them at home, VCR, you tape them at home, and they trade tapes at the end of the weeks. So we, Today we, at the driver's meeting, uh, I personally extended thanks to, uh, to Danny and, and the, the remainder of you guys for uh, the great job you've done and, and the... Uh, the uh, way you've put the mask car into the living room of everybody's home on Sunday afternoons and how much we really appreciate it. And, and uh, uh, without looking for it or expecting it, there was a round of applause from everybody there that lasted for probably 30 seconds. So you can really say to, to your superiors when you go back that the, the, uh, the men of Mascar certainly appreciate NB, TVNB and everything they're doing for us. So Well, thank you very much, very Al. Much. Thanks very much. It's a, it's a great way for you guys to get your product displayed, too into the living rooms. I know I've talked to a few people and I've said this before that their wives are not very happy that there's one more race on on a Sunday afternoon because they sit and watch the Winston Cup series and then right after that most times is the uh, or right before that is the uh, mass car tour depending on where the race is so oh, or they watch both they tape one and watch the other and we, then we play the other one back exactly so uh, some of the wives are not too happy I was talking to one of my apartment building and she said uh, thanks to you guys said I never seen my husband at all on a Sunday afternoon <laughs> so I said well you have to do something else I said and Occupy your time because I said if he loves racing, he's going to watch it for sure. But we're glad that people do watch it. We got a lot of good feedback from it, and uh, it's in the works for next year, and uh, a lot of brainstorming going on. And our we ourselves are looking possibly for some sponsorship too to make it that much better of a product. And uh, it's it's a pilot product pro project this year to bring uh, Mascar into the living room of everybody around, and uh, I'd like to say hi to the folks in PEI who are watching us now and. Hopefully next year with the uh, technologies that we have, everybody in the Maritimes will be watching this each and every week. So next time around, I... No, nope, still not yet. one more. He's still trying to get it straightened away. They're just last day and the points, everything in points being uh, up at stake, they're just being double and triple sure that everybody's exactly where, they want, where, they're, where they're supposed to be. Actually, Dave Oblinas didn't get his lap back because nope. they go back to the previous lap, so he's making his way, excuse me, back to the front of the pack. Dave Corvette's going up there, yeah. too. Yeah. Or they can choose to run at the back. They can go, go to the back of the longest line if they, if they so desire. So, uh, Dave Corvette's uh, it's too bad he had such a, 
Uh, bad luck today. There's the eight of Leo Cochran. So he's performed the, uh, the repair that I that I mentioned to you. Had the five bolts off and the, and back on. So rolled up green's going to happen next time around. But Dave Garvet, such a fierce competitor, uh, former NASCAR champion, uh, several, time, run, several run, times. Several uh, times. Don't just just once. Just a, once. Just okay. once a champion, yeah. And uh, you know, run top five all year. And I mean, to finish the season uh, laps down when you when you run so hard, so it's a shame. But. Uh, that's racing, I guess. So it's a great guy to talk to, yeah. too. Most every week I get a chance. He goes over and starts talking, and yeah. he enjoys watching it and watching us on TV, and he said he really likes it. So The green flag is out. John Fleming, your race leader right now. We're going green flag racing. Right in behind him is George Koskielix. In third is number 81 car of Bobby White. And in fourth is the 44 car of Wayne Smith. As George and John bump a little bit, see a little more bumping going on there. But George better watch out because Bobby White was watching that and he was going to go on the high side and go die, George. Yeah, Wayne Smith's uh, put a, a couple of uh, spots between, or uh, one car between himself and Sean Tucker, so puts him up into the fourth position. Scott Alexander is coming up a little bit onto, he's only one car behind Sean Tucker. A lot of bumping going on out there. Oh, she, everybody's doing it for real the last day. You don't have to worry about fixing it next week, so. John Fleming concentrating on an open track ahead of him and, and uh, thinking, you know, can I win five this year? So for a guy that never won a NASCAR race before, John Fleming has had a phenomenal season. He hopes to win the race today. That would put him in the top ten in points, and he missed the first race of the season, which was double points. So when you look at that, uh, look at the big picture, it's been a remarkable run run by John Fleming and his team. At the, the end of today's race, Al, what are you looking for in tech this week? Is you always look for something a little different each uh, week? I'm not sure. I not didn't sure? Uh, confer with the tech guys at all today. They were just, we were short a couple of fellows, and, and uh, uh, one of our tech guys is an auxiliary mount. He couldn't make it uh, because of the uh, summit in Moncton. So uh, they're short staff. They didn't need me annoying them. Anybody with a badge is in Moncton this week, that's for sure. That's for sure. Over right. 7, 17, 1800 RCMP officers here, yeah. plus FBI and everything else. So we got a well protected. Moncton area anyway, the Kodiak area. So John Fleming coming up on the slow car. Chris Duncan. Oh, oh George, George Scott, Felix into the side of him. And Bobby White into the back yeah, of George. Yeah. Wayne yeah. Smith, there's your one, two, three, yeah. four, ninety-seven, Chris, six. Chris Duncan just went to the pits. He doesn't want to be the factor in someone losing the championship. So there we go. We got some fast cars at the front. We got one, two, three, four, five cars, the 97, 6, 81, 44, 52. And they are one of the fastest that have been running all summer. Can't take anything away from Dave Gorvet or no. Scott Alexander either. Unfortunately, no. have had a run of bad luck today. No. Dana Duncan having probably his best run with Mascar since he came on board today. And he's going to go a, so, far, go, yeah. so far going to go home with a full car. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unlike two weeks ago in Fredericton. Well, they are going to run in Fredericton at NBIS on the 25th of, uh, of September. There's a fan appreciation day there, and the, the Duncans are going to make a trip to that. So they certainly appreciate the fans that they have and their sponsors. So Good. They're up to uh, up to say a final thank you there. So Chris would be uh, just right off the honeymoon then? Just about, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ken Packham gave him a little dig there uh, uh, during driver introductions today, offered his congratulations. and. Ken said, we'd be thinking about you while you're on your honeymoon. And Ken said, yeah. Ken also said, yeah, I bet you'd be thinking of us, too. And he just laughed. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Race, call, racing would be the last thing on his mind on so his honeymoon. Back into lap cars, the top five. So the, as the freight train goes by, Alan Vincent catches a glimpse of them out of the passenger side window. And they're about to put a lap on Kevin Moore. So I think they once, may be the again. only, are they the only five cars on the lead lap, Al? Uh, Pretty close I'm to it. I'm not sure whether Brad Mann might be on the lead lap. And, and Greg Seward, I believe, is on the lead lap. I really wouldn't want to call this one. <laughs> wouldn't want to be a scorer here oh, today. We have a, puff of, a lot of smoke out of the, uh, Is it the 70 car of Jerry the 70 Curtis. 70 car Jerry Curtis. Oh, still more go, coming out going of Going into turn three, puffing the smoke out of him. He had a lot of smoke when he went off in turn four. He's he's heading to the pits. Now he's going to try to save what he's got. He's going to the pit area. So great great call on Jerry Curtis's cruise part. Get him off the track before he did any damage to that car, and anybody else can caught up in it. So your race leader is the 97 car of John Fleming. In second is the 6 of George Koskulix. Third is the 81 of Bobby White. Fourth is the 44 of the Oval Outlaw, Wayne Smith. And in fifth is the 52 car, your rookie points leader, Sean Tucker. And I don't know what happened oh. there. 77 and the 48 car just kind of put 
Kevin Moore in the sandwich. One guy went by on either side. Kevin seems to be struggling with the chassis there today. Brad Mann dusting him off on the low side. Dana Duncan coming right behind him. So Steve Pettipa pointed a rolled up black flag. I don't know which it was. It was 15, 89, or 24. But there okay, oh, here we go. Down in the 88 car. Just collected the 80 of Kevin Moore. 88 of Chris Hughes. So, uh, Tepper's, Kevin, Tepper's Kevin, getting short. Well, Kevin Moore struggling. He's off the pace, and, and uh, you get off the pace too much, and you get in the way. And a guy sees a back bumper and he doesn't understand that there's that much difference in the speed and uh, he'll just collect you. So Kevin Moore is running real high on the racetrack trying to stay out of the way, trying to get a finish out of this. Doesn't have any speed at all. He's nope. lost some power. Could be related to engine temperature. So. I hear in the scanner a couple of the drivers calling for a lap count. I'm not sure myself which lap we're on, but we'll watch Steven, Steven Pettipa. I imagine we must be near the 80s anyway, or mid-80s to high 80s. Boys, We've a big bunch of cars here yeah, now. Freight train going by there now. That's just the only way to describe it, is yeah. a freight train. It's yeah. Just yeah, if you're the guy on the inside, it's got to be utterly ter terrifying. <laughs> and they're, they're really motoring. Steven Pettipa pointing at Donnie Chisholm. I guess he didn't like some of the tactics he was pulling on uh, Scott Alexander. Okay. I guess maybe that's who the block, rolled up block was for. Which is rather uncharacteristic of Donnie. Oh, he's got to be careful here now. John Fleming goes wide. Bobby White dives to the inside under the six of George Koskiel. Oh, Wayne Smith gets spun out into turn number one. Uh -oh. And he is off the track, so no yellow will come out. And he's quick to get back yeah. out. He's not sitting around waiting. Yeah, he's still in the lead lap. I didn't see what happened there, whether we have a camera shot of that 3-4, we'll have to look back. But he's got to gain some ground quick because, the, as you call it, the freight train is coming. Well, he's Minus one now. Yeah. Yeah, Sean Tucker got him with uh, by the left front by the looks of the 52 car. John Fleming picked up a little bit of room now. George, a little more concerned with Bobby White getting him from behind than, than uh, John Fleming on the other side. So you got to protect the, protect the back door, so to speak. But uh, Donald Chisholm running a good race here today. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, much, much, much improved from the first time he's out. I mean, by the, by the time the end of next season goes by, I mean, he's going to be a contender for sure. Must be getting near the end of the race because Ken Packham's down there getting ready in his, to do his post-race interviews. Five laps to go. Steve Pettipa showing them five to go. Five laps. Five laps to go. So we're on lap 95. John Fleming rounds turn three, and he's heading for four to go next time John Fleming goes by the stand. George Koskulik's catching up to him again. So lap number 96. Freight train shortened up to three cars. Sean Tucker's dropping back from that. John Fleming about to put another lap on the 80 car. Kevin Moore. Kevin Moore staying low out of the way. George follows him tight into three. Coming through to four. Looking at the lap car of Alan Vincent. He's staying low out of the way. John Fleming, George Koskulix. As they continue, the two leaders. The first to first and second place car pulling away a little bit from the 81 of Bobby White. So showing some power. George really pushing things yep. now and two he's got to be careful. Two laps to go this time by. Two laps. The popsicle and sticks are up. Pretty well open track. Now whether they catch the rest of these guys before they come to the flag nobody knows. Two laps left in the 99 season of the NASCAR Tour. Wayne Smith pulls to the outside of Dana Duncan crosses his fingers and says I got two to go for this championship. So White flag. Ross Kulik's out. really looking hard white, on the inside. White flag out for the One lap left to go. Fantastic race. Fantastic race. George has really got to shove it now to get by John Fleming. Yeah. Here he comes. Yeah. It's going to be John Fleming. Great race. George Koskulix, Bobby White, Sean Tucker. And I'd say Scott Alexander. Sander, quite possibly. So two, great, great. Took a while to get it in, but, man, they, they gave the fans a finish. Two rookies possibly in the top five. I but believe, uh, I believe we have Donald Chisholm sitting backwards over in turn two, so... It, don't know what we missed there when we were watching the watching the rest of them. But folks, check out the website on mascar.net and uh, for official race results. As usual, this is totally unofficial until after the scorers do their final tallies and uh, things are checked out in the, the tech area and everything is unofficial until you may until you see it posted. But just check out the uh, mascar site. It's www.mascar.net. Quite an informative site. A lot of you have checked it out, and uh, actually, Barry, we've had uh, about uh, 5,000 hits since the first of August, 
and uh, we changed the format on our page to give a complete finish and whatever, and, and uh, we're, we're, uh, we're ever so pleased that the count is, is that the web page is taken right off again. So uh, I, I think a lot of that we got to uh, attribute it to TVNB and, and you guys putting it out, saying, you know, www.mascar.net. So we're going to take it down now to Ken Packham. Well, she was quite a run today, son. Uh, definitely. She's a... Uh George had been wearing there for quite a while. Actually, he, he seemed quick, quicker than me early in the race. And uh, when he got by me there with a lap car, uh, seeing that I was quicker than him, but it uh, seemed like whoever was leading, you know, it's, the other guy seemed to have an advantage. Lots of temperature out there, John. Oh, yeah, very hot. Very hot. Just, just trying to keep cool and keep co concentration. Well, I'll tell you what, that's 99 in the books. 2000 looks to be a real exciting from uh, this vantage point. I'll tell you, we got some great things coming up next year. Oh, yeah, it was a great year. Just uh, looking forward to next year. All the hand pump folks, John Fleming. Great job there, John. <laughs> Gravity acclaims a victim. <laughs> it's about the temperature inside those cars. George, it's a warm one. Yeah, it was. It was real warm, but we had a lot of fun when we were racing. I'll tell you what, we're going to give, give them one of your famous smiles there. we got the cameras up top today because we don't have our down-wandering cam here. Nice hand for George Koskulix. George, you've had a good season. Yeah, we had a good season, but I should have went to the outside earlier. I was trying to save my tires, and I wouldn't say I was no quicker, but I was just as good. But That's a tough decision to make, though, man. You're running like crazy out there. you got everything you got into it going for it. you got to try and make up your mind whether to go high, stay low, wear out the tires, save the tires. Well, when I looked behind him, Bobby was falling back a little. I said I should try the outside, but there's only two to go. So, But it was a good race. Well, you did a great job, and you had a great season, and it's great to have you back, and we're pretty excited about 2000, and that ain't far away. No, and uh, by the way, Johnny said if I didn't bump him, he was buying the beer. <laughs> well, there. <laughs> a major purchase of suds forthcoming. There he is. Getting a little water into the system here. You and the car have got something in common right now. I think you're both just about overheated. Well, we're well overheated, I guess. Heck of a race, though. Yeah, it was a good race. I'm glad to see Joan and George up front there getting a win and Wayne winning the championship. And we had a darn good car. I got to thank Russell White Lumber, my dad, and, and my two brothers, and my mom, the whole, the whole gang there. Got the whole clan in the stands, haven't we? Oh, yeah, they're all here. I got to thank Jack, Rick, and uh, the girls and the crew there. And we had an awesome car. We just, just, didn't get to, just didn't get to the front. Well, by gosh, you're as close as you could get to without being there, and we're looking forward to seeing you in 2000, and we got some time to get things all geared up for that. I hope to be there. Thank you. Good to have you along. Great season there, Bob. We got to gather. We got to gather up Smitty here, so because we're all intents and purposes, this is your Car Quest Auto Parts NASCAR Tour 99 points champ. Now, this is the second time I'm going to get you to look up here because we got our buddies from TVNB here today. Have they has been all season long? And they've done a great job making sure that more folks get uh, mass car fever than uh, anything else. Congratulations, guy. What a, what a series. You had a good year. Wasn't too bad, Ken. You had an awful tough time. That, that checkered flag got a little bit elusive on you, didn't it? Sure did. But uh, consistency, uh, being there for all the deals uh, it definitely helps. You've had a good, consistent car all year, and you've uh, you had a win under your belt, too, there a couple of weeks back, so you're all set. Didn't look like we were going to get one, but that one sure helped the season out. Listen, on behalf of CarQuest and... Uh, in fact, of all of our sponsors, Skull Link, Needs and Green Gables, of course, and Cantelli, TNT, and uh, Polaris, and Intellisat, and of course, the Atlantic Chrysler dealers. Congratulations on your win. I also want to say thank you on behalf of all of us to try to make this thing work against all odds sometimes, and we make it work anyway, and each year it works a little better. But you were always one of the guys that showed up to put the car on display and do the little extra things that often really aren't as rewarding as they might be, but you've got to do them and get the job done. Uh, on behalf of NASCAR and all our sponsors, thanks for your help this year, too. Thank you, Ken. Nice hand for our champ here, folks. This is him. Wayne Smith, the Car Quest, the first Car Quest Auto Parts, points champ for NASCAR. On behalf of all the aforementioned sponsors and all of our official product suppliers and all the staff and all the management at all of our speedways, a heartfelt thank you to everyone that has made the Car Quest Auto Parts NASCAR Tour 99 the most successful ever. Even the dogs like it. Make sure you come back and start off our season with us next year. And thank you very much, Ken, for those uh, interviews. Your race winner, the 97 of John Fleming. Your second place winner was the number six car, 
of George Koskulix. And the third place car was the 81 of Bobby White. And also your 40, number 44, the Oval Outlaw, your NASCAR points champion this year, Wayne Smith. And uh, take our hats off to him. He's put on a great show this year, and he's made NASCAR what it's all about. No wow. question. Wayne, Wayne Smith put on an amazing display of control today. I, I don't think I've, and I've, I've been uh, around NASCAR since longer than Wayne Smith, let's put it that way. And Wayne usually is the, the, probably charges harder than anybody out there, but Wayne hung back today, and he... he No, keep going. Okay, sorry, we got to wrap things yeah. up here fairly yeah. quick. <laughs> anyway, Wayne, Wayne Smith, he showed, he showed some constraint. He got spun out towards the tail end of the end of the night. Uh, like a pro, he didn't wait for a yellow. He's right back on the throttle, right back in the heat of things, and, and uh, showed what it takes to be a champion. So uh, to, hats off to Wayne Smith, Frank Jackson, Wally Brown, and the rest of the crew. Uh, did a fantastic job. Worked hard at it all year long. Had the gremlin on their back until last week, actually, in Fredericton. Um, done a great job, and we know they'll be back bigger and better in 2000. Well, Ken, or uh, sorry, Al, Al, on behalf of TVMB, once, uh, once again, I'd like to thank you for having us on tour with you this year, and uh, we look forward to working with you next year. And, uh, you know, thanks to Ken Packham and, and the rest of your gang. You know, they're volunteers as much as we have volunteers in our end of things here, too. So uh, with that, there's a lot of people behind the scenes here at TVMB that nobody ever sees. They see them in the stands and whatnot, holding on camera and pointing it here and there. But uh, they're the people who really make this show what it is. It's just our voices and faces that stick out here. But uh, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have much of a product out here like you people do, Al, with uh, Mascar. So we're going to give just a little special appreciation to them, show s who some of these camera people are behind the scenes. There's men, there's women, there's... Uh, all walks of life, basically, and, and they put on a great, they do a great job, and we're really glad to have them along. So just a little appreciation towards our volunteers here at TVNB. Well, I'll tell you, Barry, I, for one, certainly appreciate TVNB, as do all the NASCAR drivers and crews and families and fans and the whole bit. And we certainly hope to grow with you guys next year and uh, look forward to uh, seeing, you, seeing you guys on camera behind the scenes. The, the people that do the job, and, and uh, let's let's roll the tape. Is that the way they say it in TV? Well, well I, I, it's something close to that anyway, and that's the tower that we're standing in. Actually, I think we went up by a window here. We might even see a, a wave we're here somewhere. Is, there that is that us? That's we're us. We're yeah. in the very end one down there. Yeah. We just see now. So uh, yep. there's more ca of our cameramen. Folks, these are all volunteers, and uh, who says you can't run a ship on volunteers? I'll hey. tell you right now, we've run a pretty good one here this summer. We've had a few bugs and problems along the way, but... Uh, NASCAR and TV, living proof. Well, <laughs> so we've, we've had a great time this summer. We look forward to seeing you people in the year 2000. NASCAR will be better and bigger and everything else in between. And on behalf of myself and the rest of the TV crew, thanks for watching NASCAR Tour 1999 on TVNB Sports. Cette semaine, Paul Arsenault, mon instructeur de contact. On est de retour à l'autodrome Canem Speedway de chez Diac, plus précisément à Barachois, en banlieue de chez Diac, cette semaine pour une autre. Ça va mal. Ça va mal, ça va mal. Ça va vraiment mal. OK. First time. 3, 2, 1. De retour à l'autodrome la, Canam Speedway de chez Diac. Cette semaine, on continue avec notre apprentissage de Mascar avec, bien sûr, mon instructeur de conduite, Paul Arsenault. Thanks, Barry. Thanks, Al. I'm here at the Can-Am Speedway, just outside Shediac with Dan Horseman. How are you tonight, Dan? Good. That's good. What we're trying to do here tonight, Dan, is we're trying to... <laughs> and a beautiful night for running a track around the car. With me is Al Horseman. Al runs the uh, number two. Many times? Thanks, Barry. Thanks, Al. We're here at the River Glades. River Glades. <laughs> Can-Am. Sorry, the hat says Can-Am. It's official de Mazcar ont euh, déterminé que Scott Fraser euh, était disqualifié, euh, Scott qui avait remporté la course bien sûr, en raison de compression de... Là, on va recommencer. Hi, I'm Danny Ross, executive producer of Mascar 99 on TVNB, back at the Can-Am Speedway for part two of Mascar 101. I'm joined here again this week with Paul Arsenault, my driving coach, and uh, 
you know, basically all the time, good, good fellow. I'm gonna try that. I'm just a little bit nervous. I, I recognize the car is is the number twenty car, right? It's it's a Taz car, they call it. J'étais passager dans un véhicule Mazcar, dans un bolide Mazcar. À ce moment-là, on a euh, cette toute celle. Bon, on commence. Ok, here we go again. <rire> 3, 2, 1. Semaine dernière, on était ici à la piste Canem Speedway à Chidiac. Euh, on va recommencer encore. Blah, blah, blah. Pour, pour remercier euh, un de tes bons amis. Oui, euh, le monsieur qu'on parle de, c'est Dan Oblinis, qui est euh, propriétaire de. Qui est propriétaire de. On va recommencer la question. Tu as dit Dan Oblinis, correct? Dan, What did I just say? Which is going to be a long, long night and for the drivers, but hopefully it'll be a good night and we'll have Mother Nature on our side for that one. So sit back, relax, and get ready for 100 laps. Coming up next will be the Mad Mascar. Ma <laughs> uh.